isn't just the sound of the all-new 2016 Mercedes-Benz GLC being put through its paces. It's the sound of innovation. The innovation behind one of the most advanced SUVs on the road today. With multiple driving modes, a suite of intelligent drive systems, and a technology-filled cabin that sets new standards in modern luxury. This is what innovation sounds like. Now, discover what it feels like in a 2016 Mercedes-Benz GLC. Some equipment described as optional. Blog Talk Radio. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skylight Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. That's right, folks. <laughs> What's going on, baby? How you doing, folks? And thank you for tuning in with me to another edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. This is episode number 250. That's right, episode number 250 in the house. And if you haven't already done so, folks, please follow me on Twitter. The Twitter name to follow is Politics Ghost, all one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost is the name to follow, and also, if you haven't already bookmarked the official website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, it is as follows, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, that's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Now, for you folks that are wondering what happened in episode number 249, I had a random Sunday edition show of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, and if you missed it, you really didn't miss much, folks, because I'm going to be completely candid with you. I was a little upset. I was a little angry, for Christ's sake, because uh, these Republicans that are now affiliated with the Republican Party are enemy watchers, all right? I'm serious. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I don't get it. I mean, these are, this is supposed to be the Republican Party, right, the party of conservatives and whatnot, And yet I am getting messages from, you know, uh, this idiot delegate asshole from Garland, Texas, Randall Dunning, all right, this lispy, fruity ass, looks like a Woody Allen butt-loving pedophile jerk dick. I'm getting freaking messages from this man where he is actually tweeting enemy images to me as if that is going to prove something, as if that's going to intimidate me. I mean, I just, I don't get it, all right? I don't get it. And I'm sick of it, all right? I'm sick of this whole sexualization of cartoons. I'm sick of this whole glorification of cartoon fandom, all right? And you see, what's unfortunate, folks, is yesterday I read these people, the Riot Act. It's very vulgar-ridden, and my apologies on that, but I was a little upset, okay? I was a little angry, and I basically told these pieces of low-grade, immature, uh, wish-they-had-a-clue pieces of trash to stop following me, stop listening to me, I told all these cartoon worshiping pieces of fandom trash to just literally just, you know, shut me off. I I don't want you listening to me, all right? I don't want you listening to me. I don't want you following me. And you see, when I did this show, folks, it seemed like all of a sudden every goddamn enemy piece of trash started following me, for Christ's sake. I mean, it doesn't make any goddamn sense, all right? I mean, I sat here yesterday and told these pieces of garbage that I don't want their patronage, all right? I mean, there's something wrong in their head, all right? I mean, if you are a pathetic loser who is actually finding any level of gratification on this goddamn enemy, for Christ's sake, then you are a pathetic loser, all right? You should be put on a goddamn sexual predator list as far as I'm concerned. I'm serious. I'm not kidding around. If you're over the age of goddamn 18, 19 years old and you're still watching all this stupid, ridiculous, sexualized cartoon garbage, 
and you're actually getting off on it and crap. You're actually putting it on your goddamn profile. You're making it a big, significant part of your life. I think that you should be put on a goddamn sexual predator list, for Christ's sake, man. I don't want you affiliating with children. I mean, I'm serious. I, I genuinely believe this, in my personal opinion, that 90% of the people that are watching this enemy crap are sexual predators, and the majority of those are probably sexual predators of the minor persuasion, if you understand and catch my drift, all right? So once again, it, I, I can see that there's a lot of people that are still listening. I mean, I actually got a whole bunch more anime, cartoon, jerk nut pieces of garbage that insist on continuously listening to me, even though I bash the living be Jesus out of them, even though I'm telling them that they're low-grade, subhuman, sexual predator trash. These people continuously listen to me, and you want to know why? I think they like the abuse. You understand that? This, in my personal opinion is the manifestation of a lack of father in the majority of these people's households, all right? I'm not kidding around. And if they did have a father, obviously the mother had a bigger schlong head than the father, all right? It's obvious. I mean, you know, this activity of males over the age of 18 uh, sexualizing cartoons, uh, jerking themselves off to ridiculous cartoons, being fans of cartoons, for Christ's sake, it's obvious that there's no fatherly influence in the goddamn household, and as a result, they are manifesting their, their wish of a father, their wish of a fatherly influence on yours truly, all right? And that's why you got all these little anime jerk nuts following me, trying to agitate me, trying to tweak me, these little sexualized cartoons, for Christ's sake, and I'm serious. It's because they had a dishrag whore mother. That obviously threw them in front of a goddamn computer, in front of a video game, or a goddamn freaking boob tube while she was going out looking for Alabama black snake at Applebee's, for Christ's sake. And this is the very consequence of this particular upbringing of children. And I'm serious, folks. I mean, look at the goddamn followers that I got after yesterday. It's like I give these people some bat bitch slaps. I mean, literally, I, I mean, I tore these idiots a new ass crack. I made them look lower than a leprechaun's nutsack, and yet these people continuously follow me. I mean, they continuously want to hear me. They're continuously listening. They enjoy the abuse. They need a good ass beating. And let me tell you, folks, I've always said this. I think that everybody needs a good beating every now and then. I'm serious. I'm not kidding around. I mean, why do you think these feminists are so uppity, for Christ's sake? Do you think that they've ever gotten an ass beaten in their life? Absolutely not. All right? Now, of course, these males that are, you know, fandom of cartoons and, you know, uh, waxing their carrots to anime and hentai and all this other garbage, all right, they've never had a true beating either. And in my personal opinion, when one has a severe beating, the humbling of the experience starts to resonate in one's psyche, and it never goes away, all right? It, it never goes away. So I sincerely believe that everybody needs a good beating so that they can bring them back down to size and realize that, you know, life isn't all fluffy and, and lovable and everybody cares about you, everybody wants to bloviate your stupid goddamn self-esteem, all that crap. It, it's, it's not like that. I, I think that each and every one of these pieces of male shit, with, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to try not to curse as much today, folks, but as you can see, I mean, this whole concept of Republicans watching anime, and then I've got all these idiots following me that are watching anime and hentai and, and jerking off to cartoons and whatnot. I'm sick of it. Now, that's all I'm going to say about that, folks. I don't want to... I don't want to talk about that anymore. I, I, I just think that these people deserve a good beating. And moreover, I think that these people should be put on a goddamn sexual predators list. Because if you want my personal opinion, you got a lot of males that are over the age of 18, 20. I mean, I even found some that are 40 years old, 50 years old, that are partaking in this ridiculous uh, cartoon jerk-off activity that are going into the computers of your children. So if you think that your children are safe in their room while they're sitting there by themselves, if you see any of this glorification of cartoon crap, I would strongly advise you to beat your children. I'm serious. I mean, give them a severe, good, classic-style, pre-child uh, you know, abuse-style beating. Because if you don't, I'm telling you that you're raising a future sexual predator as far as I'm concerned, all right? And that's all there is to it. You're raising a goddamn future sexual predator. 
Anyway, folks, I want to move on to another subject matter. If you want to hear the tirade and the riot act that I gave, please go to the damn archive at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. It's episode 249, the Random Sunday edition. I literally tell these people, I mean, you couldn't get it any more plain that I don't like you people, all right? I, I mean, you dumbass anime watchers, you cartoon glorifiers, you fan whores, I don't like you people, all right? I'm serious. I don't. So why you're listening to me and why you continuously follow me, it's obvious you like the abuse, no fatherly influence, and you need a good beating, and you're begging for it. It's obvious. All right? The manifestation of it is, is purely visible online, for Christ's sake. All right? Anyway, I want to go ahead and move on to some serious subject matters, folks. I want to get on to some Donald Trump news, for Christ's sake. The Trump train moves forward, folks. All right? Right now, I believe Donald Trump has given a damn speech. And by God, I mean, he is trashing the bejesus out of Ted Cruz and John Kasich. And if you haven't found out because you're living under a rock or you're jerking off the freaking anime cartoons, uh, Ted Cruz and John Kasich decided to get together, and they are going to collude amongst each other in an attempt to try to stop Donald Trump from getting the nomination. Now, folks, doesn't this make it more than obvious that the GOP actually wants Hillary Clinton to win the, uh, the, the presidency? I said this when I first came back on this broadcast, folks, that doesn't matter who you vote for as it relates to these establishment po- parties, all right? You are voting for the same crap, different plate, all right? That's why you got these GOP jerk dicks that are trying to sabotage Trump because they would rather see Hillary Rotten Clinton as president. And why? Why would they want to hear and see Hillary Rotten Clinton as president? Because, folks, they get to get more campaign contribution accounts, Republican senators and congressmen. All right, I'm serious. They get more money donated in their campaign contribution accounts, so they have a financial interest in making sure that Hillary Rotten Clinton is in office. Do you understand the game, folks? It's a game. It's pathetic. And I'm telling you this right now, all right? If the Republican Party wants to play this game, then I don't care who is running. If you're a Republican senator running right now that you're trying to run for re-election, if you're a, a Republican congressman trying to run for re-election, I think that you should punish these sons of bitches unless, unless they gave their devotion to Donald Trump, unless they endorsed Donald Trump to some capacity. I strongly advise everybody just to write in a candidate. I'm serious. I mean, no one in this Republican Party should be rewarded. No one should be rewarded for this type of ridiculous trash, this totalitarian trash that the GOP is trying to shove down our throats, all right? I'm serious. I'm not kidding around, all right? So once again, folks, I strongly advise everybody who has a damn senator or congressman that's running for re-election, that's a Republican, unless they endorse Donald Trump. Write in another candidate. Vote for somebody else, all right? If there's an independent candidate, by all means, vote for that son of a bitch because we cannot reward the totalitarianism that the GOP is blatantly put forth, all right? And I've said this, and I'll say it again. If we don't have the right to vote, then we don't have freedom. And if we don't have freedom, then why did we send our veterans to die in all these international conflicts, Why did we send our troops to die in world wars? Why? Can somebody explain that to me, for Christ's sake? Why did we do this if we never had freedom? If we never had freedom to begin with, then why did we tell our troops to go out there and die? Can somebody explain this to me? I cannot fathom this. I cannot understand this, for Christ's sake. I mean, how can these GOP political bureaucratic scumbags sleep at night, for Christ's sake? That's why I'm telling you, every one of these bureaucrats, whether it's on the Democratic side or on the Republican side, they are evil. They're soulless. Do you understand that? They're soulless. And that's why I am suggesting everybody, all right, if you are going to vote for Ted Cruz or John Kasich, you people are spitting in our troops' faces. Do you understand that? I'm not kidding around. I care about our troops, all right? I mean, the whole reason why we send them out to war is to defend freedom, to defend our way of life. You know, truth, justice, the American way, that whole Superman horse shit. What happened to that? What happened? 
Now you've got this ridiculous political class telling us that our vote never counted. Uh, they're, they're this political class trying to tell us that we don't really have freedom. Then what have we been doing all this time? I'm serious. Anybody who votes for Ted Cruz or John Kasich is spitting on our veterans' faces. They're spitting on our troops, and they're spitting on the memories of those that died for this country. And I'm serious. I'm not joking. If you're actually considering voting for this piece of trash, any any one of them, whether it's Ted Cruz, John Kasich, you people are spitting on our troops. Whether you want to believe it or not, you stupid totalitarian scumbags. All right. If our vote doesn't count, then what are we living in? What system is this, huh? Is this communism like I had always said? You know, folks, go back to 2008 in the archives, for Christ's sake, when I was broadcasting as true conservative radio. All right. I said that this was a communist takeover. I said that when John Turncoat McCain and Sarah Eskimo Bimbo Palin were the nominee of the 2008 GOP convention, when they were the ones running I said that it was a liberal coronation of the transition of what used to be conservatism into the ridiculous liberal communist crap. And once again, I will continue to say it, and I'll still say it. I'm telling you this right now. We are transitioning into a communist regime. And unless you stupid idiots stop waxing your carrot to freaking cartoons... Unless you idiots stop tickling your ass crack to the latest Beyonce freaking album that shit it out of her twat, all right, we are going to see ourselves incrementally going into more and more communist totalitarian situations, all right, because I'm serious, this is not a joke anymore, and that's why I got so goddamn upset yesterday, because unfortunately, unfortunately, we have Republicans that are delegates Republicans that are chairman of freaking uh, Republican parties in certain counties that are partaking in this enemy sexualization, perverted, borderline sexual predator crap. All right. And if the Republican Party is comprised of that, I mean, then, then what chance do we have? Seriously. I mean, do you remember when the Republican Party was the party for like adults? Do you remember that? Yeah, do you remember that? It used to be the party for adults, you know? I mean, people that actually owned businesses, that were producers, that were workers, that were taxpayers, for Christ's sake, you know, that had a level head on their shoulders, that wanted two-parent families, that wanted to raise their children, you know, they wanted independence, for Christ's sake. What happened? What happened to that crap? Jesus Christ. And look at everybody just thinks this is a freaking big joke, for Christ's sake, all right? I'm serious. All right, I'm not joking. This is just pathetic. It's utterly pathetic. And I'm telling you this again. All you people that are voting for Ted Cruz and John Kasich, you people are spitting on our troops. You're ripping up the Constitution. All right? You're, you're taking a garbage crap on freedom if you vote for Ted Cruz or John Kasich. I'm not kidding around. All right? And moreover, folks, uh, one of the capitalist army members, and I'm very proud of, to be honest with you, because, I mean, he's one of the few people that are actually taking his spare time and his initiative to unearth some of the actual hidden demons behind Ted Cruz's facade. And I'm talking about the god of rage out here. If you haven't gotten his blog, there are so many new mistresses, uh, so many unscrupulous donations and all kinds of nefarious activities if you haven't already done so, please view his blog at thegodofrage.wordpress.com. That's thegodofrage.wordpress.com. There are new mistresses. There are new scandals. And uh, from what I understand, this young man has another report coming out that is apparently going to hurt the Ted Cruz campaign, all right? So I strongly advise everybody to please go to his blog, spread it around like wildfire, and let everybody know what type of a disgusting, filthy, philanderous, pathetic, uh, totalitarian piece of crap Ted Cruz really is, all right? I'm not kidding around, all right? I'm not joking. 
So once again, folks, uh, the capitalist army is going to continue to dig into the freaking backgrounds of these people that want to be totalitarians and want to use the moniker of conservatism. There is no conservatism anymore, folks. Why do you think I stopped saying I was a conservative? I dropped the conservative moniker, for Christ's sake, because what I have found is those that claim to be the biggest conservatives are the most disgusting, filthy pieces of unscrupulous crap on the face of the planet, all right? And that's all there is to it, all right? I'm not kidding around. That's all there is to it, for Christ's sake. So once again, all right, if you claim to be a conservative, you claim to be a Republican, and you're for Ted Cruz, I strongly advise you to go take a look at that blog, boy, thegodofrage.wordpress.com. All right, and I strongly advise the Ted Cruz campaign to take a look at that crap, too, and see how you're going to suppress that information, you piece of trash. I'm not joking around, man. And you see, I'm proud of that young man, and I hope that Drudge, I hope that Breitbart, I hope somebody is watching and gives this man some kind of an independent uh, uh, an independent story budget so he can go out and continue to go and investigate. And that's why I strongly advise all of you morons, instead of sitting there uh, tickling your ass crack, watching cartoons, why don't you go out there and be productive? Why don't you do something that's productive in society, for Christ's sake? You stupid sexual predator pieces of shit! All right, sorry about cursing, folks. Sorry about my French. I'm just, I'm, I'm sick of it, man. I mean, we got Republicans. All right, Robert Morrow over here, who's the chairman of the freaking Travis County Republican Party, for Christ's sake. He's out there posting all this ridiculous nonsense of freaking sexualized anime cartoons. You got this lispy, disgusting, totalitarian asshole, this, uh, what is it, Randall Dunning, Randy Dunning. He has all kinds of aliases, and I strongly advise you to look into his background, too, folks, because this, na- this man is not a native Texan. This man is a carpetbagger. He's from California. He moved from California to Virginia. I mean, he, he's moved all over the place. So I'm sure if people did the investigative work and started calling around, they could find some skeletons in this scumbag's closet. And, of course, folks, if you haven't already known, this idiot Randall Dunning, all right, he, he married his wife Karen, all right, who lost her husband uh, in, what was it, 90. 92, I believe it was, when he was 37. Who told him to go diving at 230 feet? I have no idea, but that's questionable. All right, two years later, after she lost her husband, Brett Lewis, in a tragic diving accident, here comes this sniveling, lispy, borderline, in my opinion, look-alike, Woody Allen, butt-loving pedophile coming in here like a sniveling weasel, all right, going into uh, her life and basically taking her husband's money and... That's why this asshole is a stay-at-home dad. That's why he has so much time to be on Twitter. That's why he's sitting there and has so much time on his hands, for Christ's sake, because he's living off of the grave of Brett Lewis. And I'm calling you out, Randall Dunning. You're living off the grave of Brett Lewis, you and that disgusting wife of yours. You're pathetic. You call yourself... You call yourself a goddamn Republican, you piece of trash. Republicans are self-made, asshole, all right? Republicans are folks that come from families that leave them something, not some uh, ridiculous, nefarious crap. You know, and I've said this before, that there is a a theme going on here with the new Republicans that are coming up, for Christ's sake. I mean, you heard the same theme with uh, Speaker Ryan, Paul Ryan. You you know, I I told you his story. This scumbag has never worked a day in his life. His real father, Paul Murray Ryan, died in, was it 1985, uh, when Paul Ryan was 15, and Paul Murray Ryan left Paul Ryan Jr. uh, two different, not trusts, partnerships that are ran by the Ryan family, which Paul Ryan just collects the residuals on. I don't know if it's on a quarterly basis or an annual basis, but that's what got him through college. That's what basically funded his stupid little pathetic campaigns on his rise to political power. All right. And let me tell you, his mother, Betty Ryan, on top of that, all right, on top of that, This Betty Ryan uh, meets Bruce Douglas, all right? Bruce Douglas' wife 
dies in like 1994, 95. I think it's a I think it's around that time. It wasn't but a year or two later when Betty Ryan hops on the bandwagon of Bruce Douglas. She marries this man like in 96, 97, and this man ends up dead in 2002. And guess who, guess who inherits the residuals of that? Betty Ryan. So once again, folks, there's a common theme of Republicans getting rich on death and not being self-made folks, not being, uh, you know, families that bequeath something to folks, nothing, all right? Nothing. And I'm calling out Paul Ryan, too, for Christ's sake. Your mother, in my personal opinion, I think there's something nefarious going on with your mother, Paul Ryan, Betty, all right? I have never heard of a woman who married two men that died, and she conveniently economically benefited from both of those deaths, without any suspicion of foul play. I'm serious, and I have looked, and I have looked. There is no goddamn uh, autopsy. There's no toxicology report related to Paul Murray Ryan or Bruce Douglas. All right? But guess what? Uh, You got Betty Ryan. Now she's using uh, Douglas as her middle name, for Christ's sake, because Ryan is more uh, economically viable. She's living in the house that Bruce Douglas loved. Do you understand that? I mean, if you look at Bruce Douglas's obituary, it says, it says, like, you know, as the subtitle of Bruce Douglas's obituary, he lived in his house by the sea. So that means he loved that house. He probably did everything, put all his money, him and his wife. Remember, he had a wife, all right? His wife died in the mid-90s. Then Betty Ryan came in and decided to swoop this guy up, and by 2002, this son of a bitch was dead, all right? So once again, uh, there's a common theme here amongst these Republicans that are sniveling assholes that seem to be capitalizing on other people's death, all right? And I think it's disgusting. I don't think there's anything Republican about that. I think it's pathetic, all right? I think it's utterly pathetic. And this is what's leading the goddamn new Republican Party right here. That's why these Republicans can think that they're goddamn totalitarians. That's why they, can, they think they can rewrite the rules. They can just do whatever it takes. They can nullify votes. This is why they think they can do this crap, because if they can get away with death, If they can get away with, oh, oh, well, he just conveniently died, and I'm just going to economically collect the residuals. Well, then what makes you think that they can't, or they think they can't get away with this crap, huh? I'm serious, all right? I'm not joking. So once again, folks, before I move on to the next subject matter, Ted Cruz, John Kasich teaming together in an attempt to stop Trump. I mean, you could tell that Ted Cruz is getting goddamn desperate. And what Ted Cruz doesn't understand is that nobody in the Republican Party likes him. I mean, I'm serious. And this has nothing to do with anything other than his personality. Nobody likes the man. All right? I mean, to be honest with you, even if the idiot tries to get to a broker convention, they're going to want to put in a Paul Ryan. They're going to want to put in a Mitt Romney. They don't want to put in Ted Cruz. I mean, they'd even put in John Kasich before they would put in Ted Cruz. And I'm telling you, this is inside baseball Republican Party. I'm not kidding around. This is coming straight from uh, Roger Stone, which is an associate of mine. I mean, I'm telling you, inside baseball, Ted Cruz is unliked in the Republican Party. He's just being utilized as a scapegoat to try to stop Trump. Now, what is Ted Cruz going to want in return if he doesn't get the presidential nomination? This asshole wants a lifetime Supreme Court justice judgeship. All right, I'm serious. This is the inside baseball out here in the Republican Party, all right? I'm not kidding around. And they're making all these deals. I mean, did you see Ted Cruz slip uh, some money to some delegates, for Christ's sake? There's a video going around the Internet about that. How come nobody is questioning that? How come the Federal Elections Committee isn't looking at that video and questioning why in the hell Ted Cruz was handing out cash? All right? He's bribing delegates, folks. And let me tell you, that's what Donald Trump does not want to do. He does not want to bribe delegates. That's not what our country's about. Our country is about our vote counts, right? Remember one vote, one count? Remember that crap? Remember that, hey, if you don't go out and vote, well, you can't complain that the government you get, huh? (laughs) Remember that crap? I'm telling you, folks, you you need to wake up. All you folks need to wake up and see what's going on here. All right? I'm not joking. 
And I'm calling on all the remaining primaries and caucuses left in the United States. You need to go out in tremendous numbers to vote for Donald Trump so that there is no possible way that they can attempt to try to rig the elections with their diebold, rigged voting machines, uh, with purging of certain votes or whatever the nefarious garbage that has been unearthed recently that the GOP has done in an attempt uh, to suppress voters. All right? Everybody in all these remaining primary and caucus states, you need to go out and vote for Trump. And even if you're against Trump, if you're against the establishment, you should vote for Trump. You understand that? Because Trump is not only going to rock America when he is elected president of the United States, he's going to rock the world, baby. The whole world's going to change. This is a capitalist revolution, and this man is the leader right now. He is leading the capitalist revolution. And let me tell you, when the capitalists finally take power on the executive level, you are going to see a dramatic change in America. And I cannot wait. I can't wait, for Christ's sake. I mean, we're tired of this ridiculous nonsense that these liberals have brought forth into America. I mean, look at what they've done to this country, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, before I move on to the next subject matter, if you are in a caucus or primary state that's still remaining, go out and vote for Donald Trump. I mean, take as many people as you can with you and tell them to vote for Donald Trump. I mean, go out and, and yell in people's faces and tell them, hey, if you vote for Ted Cruz, if you vote for John Kasich, you're spitting on our troops. You don't care about America. You don't care about freedom. You're a totalitarian piece of trash. All right? And I'm telling you, you should repeat this over and over and over again. I mean, spread it around like wildfire. I mean, put it on memes, for Christ's sake. I mean, spread this message as far and wide as you possibly can. I'm urging all of you to do so. All right, spread the message that if you vote for Ted Cruz or John Kasich, you're spitting on our troops. All right? If you, if you vote for John Kasich or Ted Cruz, you're taking a dirty yellow bubbly piss on the graves of those that died for this country. On those that died for this country, for Christ's sake. I'm not kidding around. And if you idiots continuously want to look at yourself in the mirror and believe otherwise, and you're going to continue to vote for Ted Cruz and John Kasich, then you're the problem, you totalitarian piece of trash. You're the problem with this country. All right? Once again, folks, if you're in any of these primary caucus states, please go out and vote for Trump, all right? We need you, even if you're against the man. This man is an anti-establishment candidate. I mean, what, when are you going to get that through your head? Even if you don't like the man, you're going to shake the establishment by being in back of this man, by voting for this man. Do you understand that? You're going to rock the entire establishment. And that's why I'm encouraging everybody, please go out. Vote for Donald Trump, all right? Vote for Donald Trump. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, I want to move on to another subject matter. Let's talk a little bit about Hillary Rotten Clinton. Uh, it's already out there that she's vetting for her vice presidential candidate, for Christ's sake. I mean, you got a couple of names out here. Uh, of course, the proverbial, I'm going to try to corner the damn Hispandex market by uh, nominating the Mexican golden boy who's HUD secretary at this point in time. I'm talking about none other than that bland piece of no substance, never done nothing, uh, piece of garbage, Julian Castro. She's going to attempt to try to bamboozle the Latinos by trying to nominate this man as the vice presidential nominee. But let's be honest. I mean, I'm going to be completely honest. This idiot is from Texas, all right? This asshole was the mayor of San Antonio, Texas. And let me tell you something, the capitalist army has dug deep. And let me tell you, I personally looked into this stupid piece of trash. There is a lot of dirt on Julian Castro, all right? I'm serious. I'm talking the same type of dirt that we've heard from John Kasich, who's lived with that man, and we've talked about the man he's lived with for 15 years. I'm telling you this right now. Julian Castro is going to be toxic for the Hillary Clinton campaign, and I hope, and I sincerely hope, 
that this bimbo gets this Mexican golden boy and tries to corner the freaking Latino market. Because in my personal opinion, folks, I'm from Texas, all right? We got a lot of Mexicans walking around out here, right? So I know a little bit about these people, and they don't care. All right, they don't care if Hillary Rotten Clinton gets a goddamn Latino to vote for her, or excuse me, to be her vice presidential candidate, because that's not what they vote on. You know, folks, that the Latinos are the most politically fickle voters in America. I mean, both the Republicans and the Democrats have failed to corner this vote, and the reason is, is because, I'm going to be completely honest with you, most of them are workers, for Christ's sake, all right? Most of the Latinos in America are hard-working folk, all right? And the proof is in the statistics, all right? And if you look at StatsBrain, which takes their, uh, which takes their statistics from government sources that are quoted there, StatsBrain shows that if you look at the people that are collecting welfare or, excuse me, collecting food stamps, either one, actually, welfare or food stamps, you'll start to see the discrepancy between Latinos and almost all other races, all right? I mean, white people, almost 50% of white folks are collecting food stamps, all right? Almost 50% of black folks are collecting food stamps, all right? How many Latinos are collecting food stamps in America? 15%. One five, 15%, folks. Now, what does that statistic show? It shows that these people are hardworking folks, all right? And they don't want entitlements, all right? Okay, maybe 15% of them do, but you've got to take a look at the numbers, all right? By 2020, the Latinos are going to be the majority in America today. They're no longer going to be the minority assholes. I think you people need to realize that Latinos are going to be the majority of America. And if they are going to be the majority by 2020, then that 15% is a, it's, it's not that big at all. I'm serious. I mean, they're not the majority yet. Remember, the white folks are still the majority out here. But by 2020, they should be the majority. And by God, only 15% of them collect a goddamn entitlement, for Christ's sake. These are hardworking people. Now, why have the Republicans and the Democrats not be able to corner this voter demographic? Because these people are too busy working, all right? But now the jobs are being lost out here. Now the economic situation is pretty precarious. You've got 100 million people in America out of work, jobless, not doing a goddamn thing. Now you got the Latinos. Now you got the Latinos coming out and saying, hey, wait a minute. Now, you know, what the hell's going on here? We need to vote for somebody that's going to give us jobs, for Christ's sake. We don't want handouts. Do you understand that? The Latinos don't want handouts. I, I mean, look, I'm from freaking Texas, all right? I know these people. I hire these people, all right? They're the best workers money can buy in America today. I guarantee it, all right? So once again, if uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign thinks that they're going to corner the demographic of Latinos by nominating the Mexican golden boy, Julian Castro, they got another thing coming, all right? Now, aside from that, you know, burrito-eating idiot, all right, uh, that, that stupid sellout of his own people, Julian Castro. Uh, the, another name comes about, and Tim Kaine from Virginia. Y'all remember that guy? Tim Kaine, believe it or not, no wait, was one of the biggest advocates, one of the biggest surrogates for Barack Obama. As a matter of fact, uh, Barack Obama and Tim Kaine, you remember that in 2008? They were like butt buddies, for Christ's sake. Then after Obama got elected, we forgot about Tim Kaine. Tim, Tim Kaine got, you know, flushed down the proverbial political toilet. Y'all remember that? <laughs> I mean, this is how Democrats are, for Christ's sake. This is how Barack Obama is, for Christ's sake, man. And that's why I'm telling all you Bernie Sanders idiots, and I'm going to continue to repeat it. You feel the burn in your crotch ass cracks, all right? that you can continue to claim that you're for Bernie Sanders and this and that. Hey, idiots, Barack Obama said the same goddamn thing that Bernie Sanders is saying, and take a look at America. Take a look at the economic situation out here. Take a look at the 100 million people that are out of work. Take a look at the international community, for Christ's sake, all right? And you think this 75-year-old prostate-infected establishment candidate jerk dick in Bernie Sanders is going to do something for you? He ain't going to do dick! 
All right? He's not going to do nothing for you people. All right? As a matter of fact, you've got the Democrats already telling him to get out of the race. That's right. I mean, you've got, uh, from the reports I'm getting, they're trying to pressure him through all types of methods. I'm not just suggesting that they're just telling him to get out of the race. If you want my opinion, and this is from my uh, information gathering, they're trying to bribe him out of the race. Do you understand that? They're trying to give him more power. They, they want to give him another seat on some kind of a freaking committee, for Christ's sake. All right, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm serious. These super PACs are giving him money. I think people should look into who's giving this idiot money now. I'm telling you right now, they want this idiot to bow out of the race. And I don't know if you've seen uh, Bernie Sanders as of late, but his age is getting to him, for Christ's sake, all right? He's starting to look a little pale. He's starting to look a little bit more frail, for Christ's sake. I don't think that he can continue this uh, strenuous campaign level, for Christ's sake. So all you feel the burn, assholes, once again, you idiots have wasted your time, and any monies that you gave the Bernie Sanders Feel the Burn campaign that you took out of your college debt fund, it was for naught. All you did was fund Bernie Sanders' retirement whenever he gets out of politics. And let me tell you, I hate to reiterate this, but it needs to be said that every politician, once they retire, once they retire, they can legally take all the money that they've accumulated in their campaign contribution account and transfer it into their personal bank account tax Free. Do you understand that? That's the game of politics, you stupid imbeciles. Huh? I wonder how you dumb feel the burn assholes are thinking now. How do you feel now? Where are you feeling the burn now there, you dumbasses? Huh? And you want to know why you've got uh, Bernie Sanders contemplating possibly just dropping out of the goddamn race? Huh? I'll tell you why. Because this man is already, I mean, he's already said that he'll back up whatever the nominee is, whoever the nominee is, all right? He said this before the goddamn campaign went into full throttle, all right? I mean, do you understand this, right? I mean, he, he, no, none of you are taking it serious, first of all, all right? I mean, all you idiots are doing are just going out to his goddamn uh, rallies and rabble-rousing. You're, you're on the ass-crack of the Trump train, for Christ's sake, worrying about what we're doing. And instead of backing up your candidate, you stupid, ungrateful idiots, I mean, even Bernie Sanders said this weekend that the reason his supporters don't go out and vote is because they're poor pricks. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but he basically said the whole reason why the feel the burn in the crotch assholes aren't going out and voting for him is because they're poor, huh? I've never heard of such a thing. You're too poor to vote, for Christ's sake? I mean, Jesus Christ, I mean, have you ever heard of something so ridiculous? I mean, who has all the time on their hands right now in America today? The supposed Poe in America. The supposed Poe in America. I mean, seriously, they're the ones that have all the time, for Christ's sake. Have you looked at these world star hip-hop videos, folks? I mean, I strongly advise you to look at these ghetto glorification of ridiculous degeneracy, all right? And take a look at all these folks, all these supposed po folks that are collecting off our tax dollars. These people are getting into neighborhood brawls during the day while us capitalists are out there working our asses off, making a living, for Christ's sake, paying taxes so these stupid, ungrateful pieces of waste of life can sit around, commiserate, fight with each other, and freaking shit out children like it's going out of goddamn style. I mean, give me a break, Bernie. What are you, are you going to use that as an excuse? Oh, yeah, I'm Bernie Sanders, and you know, the reason why my people aren't going out and voting is because they're poor, and they don't have anything, and they're stupid. And you know, because they're poor and stupid, they don't know that they got to go out and vote for Bernie Sanders. Now, shut up! You shut your stupid prostate-infected wannabe socialist, really communist ass, you prostate-infected loser! And once again, I'm telling you this right now, Bernie Sanders is contemplating dropping out of the race because, of course, you idiots, and I've said this time and time again, folks, you idiots fail to support this man, all right? You fail to go out and vote for this man, all right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm serious.
I mean, you idiots just don't seem to understand that this man continues to win primaries, he continues to win caucuses, and yet he's being left off ballots. Uh, he, you know, somehow Hillary Rotten Clinton has more delegates than this man, and you people don't care. Now, that's what I'm saying. I mean, do you understand? I mean, Bernie Sanders and these socialists and these leftists that are trying to be severely progressive or, you know, borderline socialist or even communist, for Christ's sake, these people ain't going to go and vote. All right? They're not going to go and vote, for Christ's sake, man. They're losers. All right? I mean, they'd rather be, you know, smoking on Philly blunts, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? They'd rather be drinking 40 ounces. All right, they'd rather be uh, waxing their carrot to cartoons, for Christ's sake. I'm serious. These people ain't serious about politics. I mean, why do you think the GOP has taken so much, I mean, incremental totalitarian tactics to, in an attempt to try to stop the Trump train from going full steam ahead? Because we're serious, boy. The Trump train is as serious as a goddamn heart attack, for Christ's sake, all right? I'm not kidding around. We are serious. We are not a bunch of freaking rabble-rousing pieces of trash that just go out and just rabble-rouse for the sake of doing it. We want power. We want Trump to be the freaking president of the United States. We want to make America great again, for Christ's sake. We're tired of this leftist experiment. We're tired of progressive politics. We're tired of political correctness. We're tired of this pussy-whip version of America that we have been forced to swallow. We're tired of it. I'm serious. We're tired of it, for Christ's sake. And I'm not joking, folks. We're tired of it, for Christ's sake. So once again, Hillary Rodden Clinton trying to vet her potential VP. And let me tell you, the reason that she hasn't done so yet is because she knows that whoever she picks is going to be ride or die. All right? And I strongly, if, you, if the freaking Hillary Rodden Clinton campaign is listening... I strongly advise against picking this Mexican golden boy because let me tell you something. You're going to see a flurry of real uh, dirt come out on this useless piece of trash, all right, because he's completely useless. I mean, have you ever seen this dumbass talk, for Christ's sake? He's literally ripping off the cadence and, and the speech pattern of Barack Obama. I mean, he just he sounds like, you know, that overachiever uh, idiot in school that wants to be the badass, smart, articulate person, but he just can't because he's a fucking idiot. Excuse my French, all right? So once again, go ahead. If you want to go with that Mexican golden boy, we got so much dirt to throw at this idiot, it'll discredit your whole goddamn campaign, Hillary Rotten. So go ahead and do it, boy. Anyway, I want to continue on with another subject matter because, uh, you know, the feel the burn, Bernie Sanders, these people aren't serious anyway. They're just, you know, pieces of low-grade trash. And they're not going to make one big difference as it relates to the goddamn uh, election anyway, all right? Now, uh, folks, I know we've been beating this goddamn stupid issue like a dead horse, but so is the media, so is the left, you know, so is everybody who's canceling their little tour dates in North Carolina. And once again, if you've been living under a rock, North Carolina passed a state law that made it illegal. I can't believe there's even there needs to be even a law about this crap. But passed a law that stated if you are a man that you can't go into a woman's bathroom. I mean, I, I can't believe that there even needs to be a law about this crap. And because North Carolina passed this law, uh, you've got everybody and their brother, and, and especially these stars that are canceling their stupid tour dates in North Carolina. This is just pure bullshit, all right? Excuse my French. These people are just trying to put their mugs in the television, all right? They're like, oh, well. Bruce Springsteen canceled his little stupid dumb tour in North Carolina. Uh oh, uh, Hootie and the Blow. I mean, just I mean, who, whoever the hell out got Tracy Morgan. I mean, whoever the hell else is, is canceling their goddamn tour dates. They're just doing this for free PR on the backs of trannies, for Christ's sake. All right. Now, once again, folks, uh, Bill Maher this past Friday, folks, which is a socialist liberal piece of trash. It seems as if Bill Maher, or at least his writers, have been listening to yours truly, because it seems as if Bill Maher has the same goddamn verbatim 
uh, response to this whole transgendered bathroom issue as yours truly. This past Friday, in his little new rules nonsense, he literally went off on all these ridiculous white people that are trying to hop on the backs of minorities and other groups to make themselves feel significant. I mean, he literally went off. And this is a socialist liberal piece of trash, okay? He also alluded to the fact that, hey, look, why are we even discussing this ridiculous bathroom issue? Hey, look, if you look like a woman, well, then use the woman's bathroom. If you're a man, well, then go ahead and go look at the freaking, go, go to the freaking men's bathroom. And if you're a freaking asshole with a Fu Manchu and a dress, well, then hold your piss until you get home, you stupid, sick-ass pervert. I'm serious. I mean, why is this even an issue, for Christ's sake, man? Why is this dumbass tranny crap even an issue? I'll tell you why it is, all right? Because it's very easy, all right, for lazy pieces of trash. And let me tell you, I, I strongly believe that transsexuals that actually look like women aren't making the big deal about this. It's these cross-dressers and transvestites, folks, all right? I'm, I'm not kidding around. All right, it's assholes that feel like, oh, I feel like a girl today, and even though I've got my Fu Manchu beard, I'm going to go ahead and put on a dress in my disgusting man body, and just because I can, I'm going to walk into the bathroom. It's ridiculous! It's pathetic! I can't believe that this is an issue. Well, the reason I bring it up today, folks, is because <laughs> Obama... All right, he's going around the world thinking he's flexing nuts or something, all right? He went to Britain, and we're going to talk about what he did and basically uh, put I, – we'll talk about the Brexit in a second, all right? But during this press conference with Dave Cameron, they asked him about this transgendered issue, and this asshole actually said that the North Carolina law should be overturned. <laughs> overturned based on what? All right, based on what? And look, you dumbass idiots that claim to be transsexual, all right? If you don't look like a woman, you're not a transsexual. You're a cross-dresser, all right? You're, you're a clown in makeup. Do you understand that? If you don't look like a woman, all right, if you don't have the physical attributes of a woman, then you're a lazy piece of trash, and you're not a tranny, all right? You're a cross-dresser or a transvestite. Do you understand, all right? Do you understand? I mean, I'm not kidding around, for Christ's sake, man. I'm sick of this issue, all right? I mean, where are the trans testicles that are going to finally raise up and say, hey, wait a minute, all right? I, I mean, I don't want to be affiliated with cross-dressers and, and, and transvestites. I mean, where are those trans testicles at, huh? I mean, seriously. I mean, you, you trannies that, you know, went through the whole procedures and have, you know, you look like women, all right? I'm talking about the ones that you cannot even clock, all right, just based at first glance. You mean to tell me that these people want to affiliate with assholes, with Fu Manchus in dresses that are cross-dressers and transvestites? I don't think so, all right? I truly don't think so. So that's why and if you folks want to take this and make it go viral on the Internet, I've got a message for real transsexuals. I'm talking about the ones that actually look like women. All right, that the general society wouldn't be able to clock at first glance. All right, hey, trannies, do you want to be affiliated with cross dressers and transvestites? Huh? I mean, do you want to be lumped into the same category as these people? Now, look, I, I mean, we had a lot of trans testicles that used to listen to the true capitalist radio broadcast about four or five years ago. All right, and I, you know, unfortunately, I used to commiserate with these, well, not just them, but a whole bunch of people in Pal Talk, and I actually got lucky enough to be able to ask these trans testicles questions on why exactly they were trans testicles, right? And pretty valid points. They always felt like women, and they, they went through the whole transition. You know, they got boobs, you know, they got their asses injected, you know, they, they got curves, you know, they're taking estrogen or whatever the case might be, all right? and that they don't really want a gay man. You understand that? Like transsexuals, they don't want a gay man. The whole reason why they're turning into an actual female is because they want a straight man that actually wants a female. Now, 
Don't ask me the logic behind that, but that's what they want, okay? So I am calling you trannies out. Do you want to be affiliated with these cross-dresser clowns, all right, and these trans transvestite perverts? I'm serious. You know there's a difference. You idiots in the LGBT know there's a goddamn difference, all right? And like I have always said, this shouldn't even be an issue, but of course you dumbass leftists and liberals... You want to make everything a goddamn issue, all right? You, you know what I'm saying? If you actually look like a woman, no one is going to question whether or not why you're going into a woman's bathroom. If you genuinely look like a goddamn woman, if you don't, then you're a lazy tranny if you want to consider yourself a tranny, or you're a goddamn cross-dresser or a transvestite, all right? And if you're a cross-dresser, well, then... Go take a piss somewhere else. I mean, seriously, why don't you go hold it in, all right? I'm telling you, there is a a disgusting, perverted obsession as it relates to this trans-testicle bathroom issue, all right? And I don't really think it's the genuine trannies that are bitching about this. I genuinely believe that it's these ridiculous cross-dresser, trans-testicle, and gender-fluid assholes, all right? And that's another thing. I don't get this gender-fluid, pansexual nonsense. I, I don't get it, all right? I'm not saying you don't have – I mean, you have to be something. I'm not saying that you have to be a certain somebody or a certain category of person. But by God, I mean, are you serious? Gender-fluid? I mean, this is just ridiculous, all right? This is just ridiculous. And I will continue to say – that this uh, transgendered bathroom issue is nothing more than a red herring. Uh, It's nothing more than an issue to deviate people's attention from the actual election. All right, I'm serious. I mean, it's just trying to deviate your conscience from the actual election, trying to deviate your attention from the goddamn both Democrats and the Republicans being totalitarian trash, trying to take our vote away, for Christ's sake. I mean, that's all this issue is. So once again, I'm sick and tired of this issue, all right? There's obviously some perverted motive as it relates to these people continuously harping on this bathroom issue. And once again, trannies, you're going to start having to step your game up and trying to vocalize that you don't want to have anything to do with cross-dressers and transvestites, all right? Seriously, you need to start coming out and saying, hey, uh, we don't want to have nothing to do with, you know, go trans, uh, uh, tr- uh, transvestites or cross-dressers. And, folks, if you don't know the difference, well, take a look, all right? You, you're on Google, all right? Go do a YouTube image search for cross-dressers and take a look at the clown face idiots that they are. With all due respect, I mean, you know, you can do what you want. If you're a cross-dresser that likes to go to gay clubs and lip-sync, well, then that's your prerogative. I don't care. But don't go into a goddamn public restroom, all right? I mean, I've got businesses that have public restrooms, folks. Uh, I would personally, uh, you know, say something, if not physically remove some damn cross-dresser or transvestite if they thought they were going to go into a goddamn woman's bathroom. I would personally do it, boy. I would personally do it. And I think it's utterly disgusting that my private property as a business owner has to be infringed because some cross-dresser, Fu Manchu, transvestite, man-body, dress-wearing piece of crap feels that it wants to go and take a load off in a public bathroom. It's disgusting! So enough with this issue already, all right? It's stupid. It's pathetic. Even liberal socialist Bill Maher agrees with yours truly. If you look like a woman, well, then go into a woman's bathroom. No one's going to question you. If you genuinely look like a woman, all right, that you cannot be clocked at first glance, well, then go ahead and take a squat in a goddamn woman's bathroom. But but God damn it, if you're a freaking cross-dresser or a transvestite, well, then Hold your piss until you get home, you stupid, sick-ass perverts. Jesus Christ, man, I cannot believe this is an issue. Serious, I can't believe this is an issue, for Christ's sake. But like I said, folks, it's just a means in which to deviate your attention from the actual election. 
deviate your attention from both these parties trying to rob us of our freedom, trying to rob us of our vote, for Christ's sake, all right? The GOP is denying whole states from voting, all right? This is Jim Crow being implemented by the GOP, for Christ's sake. I'm not joking around. I mean, this is Jim Crow being implemented on whole states via the GOP, and they should be ashamed of themselves, all of them. So anyway, I, I don't I don't have anything more to say, for Christ's sake, about this issue. But once again, it's enough, all right? That's enough. I don't see where North Carolina did anything prejudice, anything sexist. I mean, look, I mean... <laughs> You, you you look like a man, you can be clocked like a man, go into a man's bathroom, all right? But if you look like a woman, and no one can really tell if you are a woman or not, I mean, if you actually look like a goddamn woman, well, then by God, go into the woman's bathroom. No one's going to question it, all right, you stupid morons? I mean, even liberal socialist Bill Moore agrees with me, for Christ's sake. Even liberal socialist Bill Moore agrees with me, man. So that should tell you something, all right? Seriously, that should tell you people something. Anyway, folks, uh, it's about that time to go ahead and uh, give a couple of Twitter shout-outs to the folks that are listening to the True Capitalist radio show right now. And for you folks that want a Twitter shout-out, all you have to do is go to my Twitter account, Politics Ghost, all one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost, and retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account, okay? Not the pin tweet. I'm talking about the first tweet on my Twitter account, boy. You understand that? All right, and I will give you some Twitter shout-outs live on the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. But before I do, I, I mean, I'm hyped for Christ's sake. I mean, I cannot believe Ted Cruz and John Kasich are getting together like a, a bunch of butt boys in an attempt to uh, try to thwart uh, the up-and-coming Trump train, for Christ's sake. So i gotta take some, I got to take a drink here, for Christ's sake. Hey! Where's my drink, engineer? Give me my drink. Yeah, here's my drink, for Christ's sake. And, of course, folks, I only drink nothing but the best because I'm a capitalist, all right? I carve out my own destiny, all right? I'm the one that makes the decisions on what I do in my life, not some filthy, disgusting bureaucrat, all right? That's what capitalism is all about, all right? I'm free to do whatever the hell I want to, and what I'm doing right now is drinking some Johnny Walker Blue Label. Oh, yeah. That's right, folks. Let me go ahead and take a swig of this Johnny Walker Blue Label. Oh. <laughs> Woo! I'm telling you, boy, every time I take a swig of some Johnny Walker Blue Label, it just brings a smile to my face, baby. I'm telling you, if you haven't had this blended malt. And, of course, I do like single malt scotches, too, folks. All right? I mean, I like uh, Talsker. I like uh, uh, McAllen. Uh, believe it or not, I actually like a little bit of monkey shoulder, which is, uh, if you folks out there in Scotland, uh, it's a great import that's actually a blended single malt with some blended malts. Uh, very, very good stuff. Anyway, I love scotch. It's a good drink, baby. All right? Anyway, it's a rich man's drink. It's a capitalist's drink. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, let's get to some goddamn Twitter shout-outs, and let's get to them right now! <laughs> anyway, we've got Ghost Amir Lennon. Yeah, real funny asshole, all right? Wheelchair Hambone. Yeah, real funny. <laughs> anyway, we got Exara Hawks in the house. We got Cody from Cali in the house. Oh, here we got Tohu's rolling for ghosts. Yeah, real funny. You see, this is what I'm talking about, folks. You see? You see these enemy-watching perverts? I tell them to stop listening to me. I tell them to stop following me. And look at them. Look at them. Anyway, we've got Lord Nelson, 1488, in the house. Uh, Vladimir Ghostin, yeah, real funny asshole, all right? Enough. I don't like Vladimir Lenin. He was a sick, twisted, syphilitic asshole, all right? That's why he died of a stroke, you stupid morons. Uh, the TCR stream chat in the house... Uh, feel the burn ghost, you stupid assholes. Uh, we got Dick Ripley in the house. Uh, we got Billy Korg in the place. Lee Harvey Go, yeah, real funny, Lee Harvey Go. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just getting sick of these freaking goddamn uh, 
I'm, I'm getting I'm getting tired of these goddamn stupid tw- these Twitter names for Christ's sake. All right, I'm sick of them, man. I mean, I'm a capitalist, oh, and I deserve the respect accorded that goddamn title, boy. Anyway, we've got John S.K., Johnny Knight out of London. That stupid 40-year-old piece of crap. We got Thinks A. Moral, uh, Van Darkholm, 69 in the house, R- Rush Limghost. Rush Limghost. Let me tell you something. Rush Limbaugh, don't compare me to that fat, bloated piece of trash, all right? I mean, this is a guy who's actually condoning what the GOP is doing via this ridiculous, unscrupulous delegate process. So screw you, you fat, jelly-ass bastard, Rush Limbaugh. And once again, I remember in 2006, Rush Limbaugh, when you were going through customs coming back from the Dominican Republic. Now, why would you go to the Dominican Republic? I don't know. All right, but uh, according to reports... People that are rich that go to the Dominican Republic go there for sexual reasons because there's a lot of minors out there that are prostitutes. Yeah, oh, oh. And this is a fact, folks. If you don't believe me, look it up. In 2006, this idiot was coming back from the Dominican Republic, and he got stopped at customs or, you know, or whatever it was at the time, uh, TSA, because he had illegal Viagra. Yeah, he had Viagra that he was trying to smuggle into the country. I'm not joking, all right? Freaking Rush Limbaugh, you piece of trash. Anyway, we got Capitalist Oku. Yeah, real funny asshole. Ghost crime family asshole. Ghost crime family? Let me tell you something, you scumbag! I worked for every goddamn thing that I've got. Do you understand that, boy? Do you understand that? Nobody gave me a goddamn thing, and that's what you dumbasses just don't seem to understand, boy. You understand? I'm self-made, baby. All right? I'm self-made, baby. So don't sit here and try to talk garbage to me, boy. I'm a capitalist self-made, baby. All right? That's why I can sit here and drink Johnny Walker Blue Label, baby. That's why I can go and do this broadcast, baby, because I, I, I'm, I'm an independent businessman. You understand that? <laughs> Woo! I mean, that's the beautiful part about being an independent entrepreneur. I mean, you can do what you want, all right? As long as you can pay for it, you can do whatever the hell you want, boy. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, we got Alex Bosey in the house. Hey, we got my boy Sergeant Yoda in the place. Uh, yeah, real funny. Ghost McVeigh, real funny, for Christ's sake. Bronies for Trump. Oh, um, <laughs> We've got Dark Emperor Six in the house. Hey, we got Fidel Gosler. Yeah, real funny asshole. Real funny, all right? We got Tice the Skeleton in the house. We've got Kiwi Archangel in the place. What's going on? We've got Ghostal Dunning. Are you kidding me? Ghostal Dunning, you piece of. Goddamn! You piece of crap! Ghostal Dunning, I'm telling you, I'm going to kill you. Don't compare me to that lispy. Enemy watching piece of Woody Allen butt loving look alike pedophile crap. I'm serious, he looks like a Woody Allen butt loving pedophile, in my opinion. I'm sick of that guy. I'm freaking sick of this stupid lispy bastard. Have you seen him talk for Christ's sake? He's a lispy son of a bitch. Ghost old Dunny, yeah, real funny, real <laughs> makes me sick to my stomach that you people can sit here and make such a goddamn stupid, ridiculous, goddamn freaking Twitter name. Damn it! Damn it! God damn it! I, I'm, I'm serious, man. I'm, I, I'm not joking. You know, you, you freaking anime pricks. All right? You enemy pricks need to take about ten steps away from my freaking butt crack. Do you understand that? You stupid, sick, sexualized cartoon perverts. Take ten steps away from my fucking butt crack, you fruit bowls. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That just makes me sick. You know what? Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. 
Give me that freaking mic for Christ's sake. I'm sick of this crap. I'm sick of it. I'm telling you, you know what? That that's it. I, uh, no no more Twitter shout outs. It's obvious that all I've got is a bunch of freaking enemy perverted, uh, borderline sexual predator assholes that are listening, for Christ's sake, and they think it's a big freaking joke, all right, when it isn't a joke, all right? This is serious business, assholes. Do you understand that? I mean, we got the Republican Party out of here trying to trying to take away our vote, and you could care less, all right? They're trying to take away our vote, and you could care less, you stupid, ungrateful pieces of trash. Anyway, let me move on to the next subject matter, because it's obvious you got you stupid scumbags, all right? You stupid scumbags are going to continue to do this. So let's just get on with the next subject matter of the broadcast, all right? Uh, we've got uh, Barack Obama sending 250 troops to Syria. Oh, great. Huh? Oh, that's just great. Now, what, what are they going to do, Obama? You're going to send them to arm... ISIS even more, you piece of trash. You're going to send those 250 special forces so that you can train ISIS? I mean, folks, if you haven't already known, Obama and NATO and the EU have trained, funded, and armed ISIS, for Christ's sake. Do you understand that? I mean, don't you understand that the Iraqi army has footage, and you can look this up on YouTube, where they intercepted some uh, airplane drops that were dropped by the United States that were giving armaments, uh, uh, munitions, uh, grenades, uh, rocket-propelled grenades to what they thought was a, an ISIS stronghold, all right? I mean, there is so much evidence that Barack Obama has basically funded and gave arms to. I mean, what do you think Benghazi was about, assholes, huh? Benghazi was not a consulate. It was not an embassy, all right? Look it up. It was not a consulate. It was not an embassy, all right? It was being protected by the CIA. Consulate and embassies are protected by the military, assholes, all right? Benghazi was a gun-running operation, and you people can look this up, assholes. I mean, there are a bunch of journalists that have broken this crap, all right? Uh, it was a gun-running operation, funneling guns from Turkey into Benghazi to these goddamn idiots that are out here that are calling themselves ISIS, all right? I'm serious. I'm not joking around, folks, all right? Our government is complicit with funding, arming, and training these people, all right? I mean, who do you think funded and armed the people that took over Libya, huh? Huh? Yeah, and I don't ever hear you socialists feel the burn Bernie Sanders idiots talk about that socialist being taken out of power. And I hate to keep reiterating this, but Gaddafi was the only socialist model that only half-ass worked. And I didn't hear any of you socialists cry not one tear when Muammar Gaddafi was taken down. If you look on YouTube on one of his final interviews that, was, that he gave to the Western media, he even alluded to the fact that no one is rising up in his country, that they're coming in from outside, and he keeps saying, it's al-Qaeda, it's al-Qaeda, it's al-Qaeda. All right? I'm serious, man. I'm not joking around. I mean, we funded these wild Jehudis and armed them, trained them to take over Libya. Do you understand this, right? And these same Jehudis, all right, these same Jehudis attempted to try to do the same thing to Bashar al-Assad, and because Bashar al-Assad is a down-ass Baathist, a secularist murderer, all right, I mean, let's be honest, I mean, at the time, I wasn't really for the fact that Bashar al-Assad was just murdering massive amounts of people. But now, unfortunately, I guess I understand why Bashar al-Assad slaughtered these people, because you notice... They don't want to have nothing to do with Syria anymore. That's why you have ISIS retreating to Libya, you have ISIS retreating to certain parts of Iraq, and you have ISIS going across the border into Turkey, all right? They don't want none of Bashar al-Assad. Why do you think this guy's still around, for Christ's sake, man? He's slaughtering these idiots, and they should be slaughtered. As I've always said, folks, Islam does not respect love. Do you understand that? It doesn't want to have peace with you people. Do you understand that? It only respects fear. And the proof is in Europe right now. I mean, when Europe 
opened up their arms to these supposed migrants, you know, that were, oh, poor migrants. I mean, they, uh, they were in battle written countries and we need to accept them and we need to love them we need to love the migrants look at what happened to europe i mean europe didn't give them any crap i mean europe didn't give them any kind of uh uh opposition or they they didn't they weren't bigoted towards these migrants they let them into their countries they let them in all over europe for christ's sake and what did these ungrateful migrants do for christ's sake they raped their women they're harassing their society, all right? They're trying to change their laws into Sharia law. Do you understand that? And if you're in Europe right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, ask a European, all right, yourself. Hey, do they respect love, Europeans, huh? Does Islam respect love? Is it respecting your hospitality? Is it respecting the fact that you're letting them in as a safe haven from Bashar al-Assad and everybody else that wants to slaughter these pieces of trash? No, they have not one iota of gratefulness, for Christ's sake, man. I'm serious. So when I hear Obama wanting to send 250 special force troops to Syria... This is what I believe is happening. He's sending them out there so that he can train these goddamn ISIS fighters, arm these ISIS fighters in an attempt to try to take over Syria. All right? I'm not joking, folks. I, if you don't believe me, once again, the former head of the DIA, which is the Defense Intelligence Agency, which is the equivalent of the CIA for the Pentagon, all right? General Michael T. Flynn... All right. This man has been interviewed several times stating that Obama made a willful decision to arm, train, and fund ISIS. All right. And, and when Michael T. Flynn was asked, well, why did he do this? Michael T. Flynn goes, I, I have no idea what the hell the president's doing. You are going to have to ask what it is the president is actually doing. They don't know. They don't know. I'm serious. I mean, look it up for yourself if you don't believe me. Michael T. Flynn, General Michael Flynn, he was interviewed, and he said himself that Obama armed, funded, and trained ISIS, and he made a willful decision to do so. All right, so Obama, you can't hide behind the fact that, oh, it was the bureaucratic chain of command. I didn't really know. I just signed off. I didn't get it. Hey, the head, the former head of the DIA of the Defense Intelligence Agency has just called your bluff, Obama, all right? I'm serious. And how and why anybody can still back this man up, all right? How and why anybody can still back this man up is beyond me. I'm serious. But it goes to show you how brainwashed people are in America today, all right? I'm not kidding. I'm not joking. I mean, these people are so brainwashed, man. I make a, a show yesterday bashing anime, and just take a look at the people. Before I made that show, all these anime jerk dicks were on my sack, swinging from it like a freaking monkey, all right? I make fun of their stupid little cartoon fetish, and it's over, all right? I mean, just imagine the brainwashing behind that, all right? that they're willing to spend so much time, effort, and energy to try to uh, legitimize their sexual fetishes of goddamn cartoons because I criticize it. Do you understand? I mean, do you understand the level of brainwashing that this system has on you simple people? It's pathetic. It's utterly pathetic. All right? I mean, I don't see this much energy, time, and effort being put into the defense of freaking cartoon fetish crap. I don't see that same type of effort and energy into preserving the right to vote and preserving our freedom into preserving our way of life. I mean, do you get it, folks? I'm serious. This is how brainwashed you fucking morons are. Excuse my friends. This is how brainwashed you idiots are. You morons care more about freaking uh, dumbass Beyonce Knowles shitting out her next album, for Christ's sake, than you do about your goddamn country. It's pathetic. 
So once again, folks, as I suggested, all right, uh, Obama is going to send 250 troops to Syria, and all he's doing is, is training more ISIS fighters. And guess what he's going to do? He's going to bring them over here. He's already bringing them over here, morons. That was in the Omnis bill that was passed by this Republican-dominated Congress, all right, around the first of the year. Do you remember that, that Omnis bill, for Christ's sake? I mean, it's in that bill to fund this crap, to bring wild Jehudis from these battle-hardened areas and, and push out uh, Latino and black families out of Section 8 homes and to put in these wild Jehudis in there, for Christ's sake. I mean, this is a plan, for Christ's sake. Do you understand that? This totalitarian government wants to take control of our lives. So once again, folks, I mean, I'm, I'm sick of this crap. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. Now, let me move on to these other subject matters, and then we'll get on to radio graffiti, your calls, and all this other stuff. Did you hear Obama? And I'm, I'm sure my brethren from across the pond over there in Britain, Britannia, are probably sick to their stomach. I wouldn't blame you for hating America after this jive turkey asshole went to Britannia and actually threatened he threatened Britannia that if they voted for the Brexit, that uh, they were going to be an economic squalor because America was not going to trade with them anymore. I mean, did you hear this crap? I mean, this, this is Mr. Diplomacy right here. Can you believe this piece of trash? And look, I remember in 2008 Europe, I mean, and I remember, uh, you know, those uh, videos are still on YouTube, asshole, all right? I remember all you Europeans came out in the thousands, in, in some cases the hundred thousands, to watch this dumbass speak because you all thought that this man was the savior of the world. Do you all remember that? Do you all remember his European tour? Look up on YouTube, for Christ's sake, all these stupid Europeans gawking at Barack Obama as if he was the second goddamn coming of Christ or some crap. Now look at what happened, huh? Look at what happened. He goes to Britannia and tells you Britons and you Brits and you, you, you people from that part of the country, or that part of the world, excuse me, that if you vote for the Brexit, that the United States isn't going to trade with you anymore and that your economic situation is going to collapse. I mean, that is a blatant economic terroristic threat. And look, folks, uh, to my fellow brethren from across the pond in Britannia, I apologize all right, for our pathetic excuse for a goddamn president, all right? I mean, he does not speak for the American people. He speaks for his own bureaucratic totalitarian self, all right? And I can't believe that we elect this man. This man has the audacity to go to Britannia right next to Dave Cameron and threaten Britannia. I mean, what is this idiot doing, for Christ's sake, man? Jesus Christ, I cannot wait till this idiot is no longer president anymore, man. And that's why I want Donald Trump as president, because I believe, folks, and I'm serious when I say this, I believe that he's going to entertain war crimes as it relates to not only Barack Obama, but of course the Bush crime family. And, and folks, why do you think the Bushes are so scared? I mean, they're the ones driving this whole GOP collusion crap against Trump, folks. Do you understand this? All right? I mean, they are so scared about those 28 pages being released. They're so scared about them being potentially implicated in the 9-11 attacks. I mean, they're so scared that they could potentially be put on trial for war crimes that they have uh, basically moved most of their family. And you should look this up, folks, in Paraguay. All right, South America, Paraguay, South America. Take a look at how much land the Bushes own down there, and why would they own uh, land in Paraguay? There's no extradition out of Paraguay. All right, that's where a lot of the criminals go. That's where everybody who's wanted by the FBI, anybody who's wanted by the American government goes to because Paraguay does not extradite people that is in their country. All right? And let me tell you, there's already a, a, a group of countries that the Bushes and Dick Cheney can't go into. Same with Obama, all right? I mean, if they go into these countries, I mean, you got the world court wanting to snag their ass, and I don't blame them. All right? I don't blame them. 
So once again, to my brethren across the pond over there, I tell you, to, and I urge you to vote. Uh, just vote for the Brexit, all right? Get the hell out of the EU, all right? Britannia has always been a sovereign nation. It's always been able to take care of itself, all right? I mean, it has gone through some of the worst times in world history, for Christ's sake, and has come up on top, all right? And look, I, I believe in Britannia, all right? I don't want to lose the friendship with Britannia. And this scumbag president of ours is basically teetering that friendship, for Christ's sake. I'm sure that the most of the people out there in Britannia are sick. All right, but once again, folks, I strongly advise you to remember in 2008 when all of Europe was circle jerking, when uh, Barack Obama was making this worldwide apology tour, and you guys came out in hundreds of thousands. Y'all remember that? And if y'all don't, it's documented. It's on YouTube. You all were salivating over this man. All right? So once again, you know, chickens coming home to roost. That's all I've got to say. Chickens coming home to roost. Anyway, folks, I want to move on, folks, because we're running out of time, and I want to take your calls. I want to go to Radio Graffiti and all that other stuff. Did you all hear about this uh, Dutch paper out of the Netherlands publishing a cartoon uh, depicting Turkey's president or prime minister? I don't know what kind of pissing ground system they got over there. Uh, but depicting this uh, Erdogan, I don't even know how to pronounce his stupid, dumb name, for Christ's sake. But they depict the president as an ape-crushing free speech. Now, if you want my personal opinion, that wasn't a horrible depiction. You can tell that the uh, publication in the Netherlands was trying to delicately approach uh, this particular free speech issue. Uh, but let me tell you something. I think that everybody, I think that everybody in the international community should start making memes, uh, should start making fun of this damn president of Turkey and see if he can't take us all to jail. Huh? I'm serious. I'm calling on everybody. If you ain't got no freaking, if you got more time on your hands than money, all right, make memes about this asshole. Make fun of this Turkish uh, president asshole. Do whatever it takes to completely demoralize this stupid Turkish president piece of trash. And if you want to know why, folks, Angela Merkel is actually allowing Turkey to indict German citizens. All right, because they are criticizing the Turkish leadership. Do you understand this? I'm not joking, folks. This disgusting piece of fat, bulldike garbage, Angela Merkel, is actually allowing the prosecution of her own country because they're making fun of another country's stupid, dumbass president. I mean, I've never heard of such a thing in my life. You know what I'm saying? I've never heard of a, such a thing in my life. But once again, I am calling on everybody on the Internet, all right? I mean, just flood it all over the place. Make fun of this president of Turkey, for Christ's sake. I mean, make him so butthurt that he's going to want to go to the U.N. and make it illegal to, to freaking make fun of his stupid, balding ass, all right? And I'm not joking. I don't know how uh, German people can continue to go along with this crap. Once again, if there is somebody in the German uh, military, I mean, please assume command and arrest Angela Merkel for treason. I mean, this is blatant treason against the German people. She allowed the enemy to come into her country. I mean, once again, look up the mass rapings that are happening out there. Look, take a look at all the garbage that's happening out there because of the migrant crisis in Germany, for Christ's sake. And this has everything to do with Angela Merkel. And this just kind of poo-poos the idea that, oh, if women were the leaders, there'd be no wars, and it'd be such a utopia, and everything would be so great. Oh, yeah? Look at this woman leader over here in Germany, for Christ's sake. She is destroying her own country, and she's loving it. Are you kidding me? I mean, she's probably whacking her clitoris off, which hangs down probably to her knees, this disgusting bull dyke. She's whacking it off like a windshield wiper out of whack as her freaking German people are being destroyed. So once again, a Dutch paper publishes some cartoon pic depicting the Turkish president as an ape-crushing free speech. I think he should do worse than that. All right? 
I'm serious. I think that there should be all kinds of memes, all kinds of disgusting filth being directed at this Turkish goddamn freaking leader, this Turkish president. He's a piece of totalitarian trash, and for him to stick his nose into German people's business should piss off the German people beyond, beyond uh, comprehension. Anyway, folks, as Angela Merkel oppresses her own country over free speech, Merkel is now hinting that she's going to want more military action in Libya. Oh, oh. I mean, don't you think it's rather a coinkadink, folks, that Barack Hussein Obama is going to send 250 special force troops to Syria so that he can train and arm and fund ISIS even more? And now, the same day, you got Angela Merkel over here entertaining the idea that she wants more military action in Libya. Uh, I'm telling you, they want to train these people. They want to freaking arm these people. I mean, even Donald Trump has alluded to this. Our troops that are fighting these pieces of trash out there in the Middle East, they're even saying that these ISIS pricks have better trucks. They got better armaments. They got better armor. They got better everything because NATO gave it to them. The EU gave it to them. Obama gave it to them, for Christ's sake. When the hell are you idiots going to wake up? When are you going to wake up with this crap? Once again, Angela Merkel hinting at more military action in Libya, for Christ's sake. I mean, it doesn't even make any sense. But once again, folks, this is the liberals. These are the leftists that you people voted in. You thought it was going to be a great utopia. You thought it was going to be socialism forever, didn't you? (laughs) It's sad. It really is sad. It'd be funny if it wasn't so tragic, folks, but seriously. I mean, you Europeans, you all thought that you, – you, you all thought socialism was going to last forever, didn't you, huh? Uh, I bet you all thought that you were going to live that uh, video by Prodigy, smack my bitch up forever, didn't you, huh? <laughs> I mean, it's sad, folks. I don't mean to be laughing, man. But, I mean, there is a little element of glee that is within me uh, watching socialists suffer a tiny bit. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, this should go to show you all there there ain't no such thing as the government taking care of you from cradle to grave, all right? It may last for a generation, possibly two, but it can't economically sustain itself, folks, and the proof is in Europe, boy. The proof is in Europe. Anyway, folks, uh, I want to get to a couple of calls before Radio Graffiti because I, I think that there's a couple of people that actually want to say something serious so uh, we're going to take about five to ten minutes of those calls, and then we're going to go ahead and go to Radio Graffiti. Uh, 516-453-9903 is the number to call. I believe we got Tub Guy in the house. Is you, are you there, Tub Guy? Ghost, I have a story for all of you about a true degenerate, my old college roommate. People have been asking to hear it for a while. May I have a minute to tell it, please? Go right ahead, man. Go ahead. The floor is yours, man. At first, I thought he was odd. I saw him bringing in a 101 Dalmatians comforter when he was over 30 years old. Slowly, he admits stuff like being a bisexual, then a brony, and I was just thinking, okay, whatever, just another person. I would ask him to come out to the bar with the rest of us, but he would stay at home and role play. He did this for two years, and I would hear things through the thin walls like, oh, Big Mac. So I was thinking he was eating a sandwich. Well, eventually, another roommate borrowed phone and the wallpaper was a My Little Pony horse with a giant cock on it. I realized that for over two years he's been role-playing and feeding his meat to talking horses, and I've been hearing it through the walls. I mean, it's are you worse. serious, man? I mean, I mean, look, you, this is obviously an insight to what these sick, twisted perverts, these people that are sexualizing cartoons are doing. I mean, this is a legit story? Completely. It gets worse. Let me explain. This person would clean his bathroom every three months and come out of his room every two weeks with three bags of garbage. He'd steal food from the other roommates. One of my roommates to watch some super violent movie called VHS. My other roommate shut it off on his own laptop because it was making him sick. And it was turning on the brony roommate. Yes, he could he would look over and see this guy getting turned on by it. So when he shut it off, the brony flipped the table up, started punching himself in the face until it was black and blue, screaming, just end it. He also threatened to kill himself over a tabletop online Dungeons and Dragons game, so the police came over looking for him. 
He also tried oh, to attack my, my other school roommate, who was a 60-year-old man, out of work, thanks to some jerk dicks who uh, voted. I don't know if you heard what happened with DreamWorks, where the uh, CEO donated a huge amount to Obama's super PAC and then fired everyone over the age of 40. Oh, no, anyway, I did not hear that. Yeah, that happened to a bunch of people from DreamWorks. So anyway, he was there getting his, his uh, master's. So he actually attacked this 60-year-old roommate, and the guy had to pull a knife on him. None of this shit would happen when I was at home because the guy knew I wouldn't put up with it, but he would do it to the other roommates. Now, would you say that this former roommate of mine sounds like an upcoming serial killer? No, absolutely. And, you know, tough guy, I mean, I, I know I had that random Sunday show yesterday, and it's just because I'm sick and tired of these twisted sexualization of cartoons out here. And I know that I, I alluded to this. I think these people are, are former are, are, are potential, excuse me, sexual predators, if not uh, harmful members of society. I'm really glad that you shared this. I mean, is this typical amongst these people that sexualize cartoons? I mean, in your perspective? Among bronies, I would say so, but I don't have any experience with anything else. So uh, this is a 30-year-old man that did this. He was out here sexualizing cartoons. 33-year-old man. 33-year-old man sexualizing cartoons. Now, do you know if this man was paying for his college, or did he got a government grant, or did he uh, take out a loan? Government grants. Oh, Jesus and- Christ. Oh, my God. And you see, this is why I criticize the government I grant system, folks. All of you, but unfortunately, he knows. Go ahead. What's up, guy? You still there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, what were you going to say? I said I would tell all of you his phone number so we could give him a call about this crap, but unfortunately, he knows my real identity. Oh, well, yeah, you don't want to do that, tub guy. I tell you what, uh, stay there. We're going to come back to you uh, via uh, the radio graffiti. Uh, But once again, folks, I mean, this is why I went off yesterday on episode 249 on on these people that sexualize cartoons. All right, you're hearing it firsthand. All right, I've never witnessed these people firsthand. Thank God. I don't ever want to meet these people. I don't ever want to affiliate with these people. I don't ever want to talk to these people that sexualize cartoons because I'm telling you, just by observing them via the Internet, via Twitter, via their correspondences, for Christ's sake, you can tell that these people are sick, twisted pricks, and they should be put on some goddamn sexual predator list or potential sexual predator list. Jesus Christ. Hey, are we are we back on the goddamn air, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ! Sorry, folks. My apologies, for Christ's sake. I mean, that was my bad. Uh, are we back? Are, are, hey, engineer, are we back on the goddamn air, for Christ's sake? Hey, anyway, folks, uh, that was my bad, folks. You know, as you know, we've been flooding down here in Texas. All right, and, uh, you know, a lot of damage has happened, especially in the Austin, Texas area, for Christ's sake. All right, I mean, we've been having torrential rains and so on and so forth, and we've got, uh, you know, crews in my building here uh, trying to repair some crap. Who the hell knows, for Christ's sake? But let alone uh, they hit something, they they tripped a break or something, and let the whole goddamn building uh, in the dark, all right? So here I am, I'm broadcasting, for Christ's sake, right in the middle of the goddamn broadcast. The whole goddamn building goes dark, for Christ's sake. So, uh, you know, luckily, uh, you know, I called on the cell phone and read them the goddamn riot act, and, uh, you know, within the next uh, three, four minutes, they put the goddamn power back on, and thank goddamn God. All right? I mean, Jesus Christ, I pay a lot of money to be in this fucking building, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, do you understand that not only do I pay my mortgage, all right? Now, look, I I own this joint, all right? I'm serious. I mean, I own about 70% of this joint, all right? I'm just paying a mortgage on the uh, 30% left over, all right? Now, what's unfortunate is that, uh, you know, uh, I pay a mortgage on this, which isn't very high, to be honest with you, Uh, But at the same time, I pay a freaking homeowner association fee to be in this building, all right? And, of course, that pays for all the the elevators. It pays for the person that, you you know, that says hi to you, the doorman, all this other crap. 
I expect a little bit better than this crap. All right? I don't want my freaking uh, goddamn electricity just going out because these dumbass workers are tripping breakers out here. All right? I don't appreciate it. Anyway, folks, we got about 15, a little less than 15 minutes left in the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. We're going to go ahead and go into Radio Graffiti. And, of course, folks, if you've been listening to me on the archive, we are going to have a post-show edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast that you can only listen to if you're listening to me on the phone or you're listening to me online or, or via the podcast, I should say. All right? So let's just go ahead and get into Radio Graffiti right now. All right? And, of course, before we get into anything else, please follow me on Twitter, folks. Politics Ghost is the name to follow, all right? All one word, no underscores, all right? All right, Politics Ghost is the name to follow, all right? And, of course, if you haven't already done so, please bookmark the official website of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. It is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, all right? I don't appreciate these goddamn, the, the, the freaking, uh, the electricity going off in the whole goddamn building. I really don't appreciate it, all right? And believe me, I let these pieces of trash know it. So let's go ahead and start Radio Graffiti right now. All right, let's go ahead and go. Uh, how about uh, let's just take some, uh, I don't know, Skype callers. I don't know who to go to first. How about Cave Johnson, Radio Graffiti? As we are walking through the dusty plains of Texas, we spot the rarest animal in the entire world, the ghost goat. Ghost Goat is infamous for its catalyst views, and for that, we must deal with it before it pollutes the Texas wildlife. Oh, shut up, all right? Shut up and stick a goat head straight up your pooper, all right? Uh, Tango Whiskey, Radio Graffiti. The screamers and the crazy people who love Donald Trump, most of them are men who masturbate to anime. Oh, look, oh, it's Pokemon, it's the mud chips. Oh, look, I'm playing with my pink willy right now, watching some Japanese little... Yeah, 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 real funny, Tango Risky. And let me tell you, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, since we have a bunch of these anime idiots that want to be for Trump, I mean, they're actually demoralizing and demeaning the Trump brand. So I strongly advise all you anime, sick-ass, sexual predator perverts to stop supporting Trump, all right? We don't need your freaking uh, endorsement, all right? You people are sick, twisted perverts. You heard a Republican strategist there say that. But at the same time, Mr. Republican strategist, we've got Randall Dunning and, uh, you know, uh, Robert Morrow and all these other freaking sick-ass, twisted perverts who are out here waxing their goddamn carrot to the same goddamn enemy crap. So don't give me that crap there, boy. 727 Radio Graffiti. Now, you're taking too long, you stupid milky liquor. How about uh, 781 Radio Graffiti? Hey, Ghost, I want you to shove your buck up my ass. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, why don't I get somebody to call you, and maybe they can help you out with it. Is that all right? Sounds good to me. All right, 781-351-0126. Somebody help this idiot out. He needs some help, all right? I'm sure some of you anime pricks can help help him out. Uh, 269 Radio Graffiti. Houston Hoveron is proud to announce that Ghost from True Capitalist Radio has endorsed our motorized scooters and to celebrate we are having an anime ball. Uh, shut up with the freaking handicap crap, all right? I'm not a freaking cripple. Jesus Christ. Professor Professor Falcon Punch, Radio Graffiti. And I'm sitting back, sipping on some Johnny Walker Blue Label, waxing my wee-wee to drawings of little girls. And watch freaking... Oh, shut up, you stupid morons. I mean, seriously, you think you enemies are going to get to me on that crap? I know that you idiots are trying to troll me into thinking that that's going to get me all upset. Look, it ain't going to get me upset. And I'll tell you why. Because you people are sexual predators. You're future sexual predators. All right? You're losers. You're pathetically anal waste of life. You should be put on a sexual predators list. That's all I'm saying, all right? So you can continue to think that that's funny and hot, it's so cute. <laughs> You're an idiot, all of you. A real black guy, Radio Graffiti. This is True Anime Radio. True Anime Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of hentai. Give him anime or give him damn. That's it. Period. Reporting live. You stupid piece of crap. You piece of crap. You sick crap. God damn it. Do you see this crap? Do you see what I got?
gotta put up with with these sick ass sexual predator perverts. I'm telling you, each and every one of these people should be exposed. Each and every one of them, for Christ's sake, they should be fired from their jobs. All right, if these people have freaking significant others, their significant others should be notified that they're partaking in this sick, sadistic crap. All right, I'm calling on all the internet to freaking expose these goddamn sexual predators. These freaking perverts, for Christ's sake. If these people are working, for Christ's sake, their employers, their employers need to know this crap. Jesus Christ, screw all of you damn cartoon fetid pieces of trash. Screw all of you. Give me the goddamn mic. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Give me the goddamn mic, for Christ's sake. I'm telling you, you anime sick, twisted perverts should all be exposed, and I hope that, uh, these people that are against you, because you let me tell you something. There's a lot of people that are against this crap. Please, if you know these people, you know that they're uh, you know, working or doing something, go forward their employers the kind of garbage that they're doing, all right? I'm serious. I mean, me as an employer, I would like to know if one of my employees is partaking in this future sexual predator garbage. I'm not joking, man. I'm not kidding around. Dick breath, radio graffiti. I am going to suck your schlong. Oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, do you hear that? I mean, is that supposed to be funny, you dumbass? I mean, look at the obsession with homosexuality, for Christ's sake, all right? And, and then these people want to go into a freaking woman's bathroom? I mean, give me a freaking break. All right, 435, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost of Docs, would you like to watch some anime with me with some Johnny Walker hentai label? Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ! Do you hear that crap? Good God! I'm telling you, I'm getting sick of this crap. 831 Radio Graffiti. Hello, Ghost Kermit the Frog here. I was wondering if I can ask you something about my friend Big Bird. You see, he's continuously watching anime for 24 hours, and I don't know what I should do about him. What, what do you think I should do? Should I uh, tell him to stop? Uh, well, you know what I think you should do, Kermit? I think that you should kill yourself. That's what I think you should do, you stupid, dumb, freaking frog. Put yourself in a freaking microwave and blow up. That's what I think you should do, Kermit, you freaking milky liquor. 786 Radio Graffiti. Uh, hi, uh, I'm a high school student, and let me tell you, I'm sick and fucking tired of these fuck. Yeah, you know what? You're, you're not a high school student, for Christ's sake. You sound like you're 35 years old. All right, give me a break. Uh, pivot Idiot Radio Graffiti. 575 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, shout out to oh, Karasin. Shout Christ. out to Sergeant Yo. Teutonic Plague. Oh, oh my- shut up. All right, shut up. People are hating on the Teutonic Plague, and since they are, it's the Teutonic Plague. What's going on? Radio Graffiti, baby. Props the ghost. He's our host. When it comes to dropping knowledge, he's a man with the most. He's our H-O-S-T, G-H-O-S-T. You trolls better not trifle with him. See, here's what I'm telling thee. Ghost is the man with the master plan. Shit gets real with a mic in his hand. It's either with or against the TCA you stand. All you anime fucks, go back to Japan. Signing off, it's Teutonic Plague. You cyber vermin trolls ain't nothing to bag. Peace. Oh, man. Oh, man. He spit some bars on you goddamn anime pieces of garbage. I mean, the Teutonic Plague spit some bars on you goddamn haters of the true capitalist army, baby. Woo! <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see what else we got going on over here. Uh, Gary Powers, Radio Graffiti. Let me tell you something. If you're a worker, if you're yeah, well, unfortunately, uh, you, you, unfortunately, your goddamn stupid 386SX computer on top of your 144K modem can't lift the voice packets up to the server so we can hear your stupid ass. 619 Radio Graffiti. Hey, guys, it's Asho. I actually wanted to contribute to the show, but I couldn't do it, so, yeah. Well, we, hey, tell you what, uh, stay on there, Asho, okay? Well, we're going to do a third hour. And we'll come back to you and talk to you and see what you want to talk about. All right, man, just stay right there. Uh, Cosmo Brockington, Radio Graffiti. I'm telling you, two words, two words, two freaking words. Bareback ghost. <laughs> Keep it up for crap. Oh, yeah, 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 real funny, Cosmo Brockington. Real funny, asshole, all right? 
I'm telling you idiots right now, if you don't believe me, why don't you take a look at the Craigslist ads right now and take a look at Mail for Mail, all right, and take a look at the sick, twisted garbage. These damn LGBT don't even have enough respect for themselves to protect themselves from the AIDS, and yet they want to go into a goddamn woman's bathroom. I mean, that's all I'm saying. If if they have no respect for themselves, then why should we have respect for them with all due respect, all right? If they don't respect themselves for not putting a condom on it, then why should we? That's all I'm saying, all right? That's all I am saying. I mean, what am I, a bad guy now? Anyway, Godzilla 3709, Radio Graffiti. That's some pretty good guitar there, Godzilla. I'm telling you, you got some skills. That's a pretty good, uh, that's a Pulp Fiction surfer song. Uh, who else do we got? 646 Radio Graffiti. Yo, go son of Bin Laden. You want to come over, come over my house and come on my dick? Oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, there's nothing funny about that, you jerk. Oh, I mean, seriously, there, there's nothing funny about that. I mean, if it was funny, it'd be funny if everybody didn't like gays, but, you know, gays are now intermixed with the goddamn society, so it's not funny anymore, for Christ's sake, all right? Uh, who else do we got? The Mighty Nate, Radio Graffiti. Never see Donald Trump out here. Uh, well, unfortunately, we can't understand your little stupid dumb ass because you got a 386SX computer. Uh, Gary Brodsky, Radio Graffiti. On their shoulders like... I mean, Jesus Christ, do all you idiots have 386SX computers, you jerk dick? 781, Radio Graffiti. Trump eats ass. Trump eats ass. Trump eats ass. So does your father. It's obvious from the lack of bass in your voice, you fruit bowl asshole. You fruit bowl asshole. Uh, Who else do we got going on over here? How about 614, Radio Graffiti? This tent. Oh, man. I mean, is everybody gone mad here? I mean, what's going on, man? Uh, who else do we got? 716 Radio Graffiti. Yes, the day's over, and the water's coming down, and the day's over, and the day's Yeah, I actually like I actually like that song, man. It's actually a pretty deep song if you listen to it. Two six nine radio graffiti. Hi, Ghost. I'm a crippled veteran from Afghanistan, and I I know you know more than anybody else how hard it is to get up into the bars on Sixth Street without a ramp to use. I- Shut up! Shut your face! All right, I'm not a goddamn cripple, and that's all there is to it, for Christ's sake. Anyway, we're about to end the live broadcast of the True Capitalist Radio Show, folks. If you want to listen right now and listen to the third hour, the only way you're going to be able to listen to it is if you call up 516-453-9903 before the end of this broadcast. That's the only way that you're going to be able to listen to it. Anyway, folks, follow me on Twitter, Politics Ghost, all one word, no underscores. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. And, of course, if you haven't already done so, please bookmark the official website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Anyway, thank you all for listening to me, folks. Same place, same time tomorrow, possibly. I don't know yet. I may take a break. I'm not sure. Anyway, folks, follow me on Twitter to find out. I'm out of here, baby. <laughs> All right, and we're off of the regular broadcast, folks. Now, everything that is being broadcasted now can only be listened to by those that are on the phone right now listening and those that are listening into the podcast, all right? And once again, folks, I want to reiterate that uh, you hear this sick-ass, twisted, anime, uh, you know, uh, cartoon fetish crap, all right? You hear this, all right? I mean, this is what I'm against. I told these people to stop listening to me. I told these people to stop following me. But have you taken a look at my goddamn Twitter account? I'm getting more and more followers of these fruit bowls. I'm getting more and more followers by these goddamn fruit bowls. And it's sick. It's utterly sick to my stomach, boy. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue on with a little bit of radio graffiti, and then uh, we'll get into some more serious conversation and uh, that's how we'll do it, all right? Here we go. Uh, how about Mango Frisky, Radio Goddamn Graffiti? 
I can take more than one man at a time, boy. I can pound a living be Jesus out of about two or three homosexuals, all right? What I do... Oh, Jesus, get this asshole out of here, for Christ's sake. Why don't you goddamn LGBT fruit bowls take about ten steps away from my freaking butt crack, for Christ's sake, man? Jesus Christ, man. Seriously, I mean, you fruity-ass bastards are literally on your knees trying to clean my bowl cheese. It's sick. It's sick. The People's Republic of China, Radio Graffiti. And now, he'll take it from here. The penetrator of free teams, the man they call the ghost. Shut up, all right? I don't appreciate you idiots sitting here and redoing my intro, you sorry sex of crap, all right? I'm telling you, you see this? They love the abuse, these anime, sick-ass, twisted, future sexual predator cartoon fetish assholes. They love the abuse. They love it. They have no fatherly influence, for Christ's sake. And what does that make me, huh? I am their father figure, cause they ain't got one. They're putting a thumb in their ass till the end of time. Fruit bowls. Anyway, who else do we got here? 786, Radio Graffiti. Templeton is a fucking faggot. Yeah, well, you know, you say that out here in uh, Austin, Texas. I, I guarantee you get your ass beaten to be Jesus by talking that way about my goddamn dog, boy. All right, I'm serious. I'll whoop your ass in the dog meat, you piece of trash. Go on, come out here to Austin and say that, boy. Son of a bitch. Uh, Brony Drumming, Radio Graffiti. Radio Graffiti. Not now! You see, once again, you're, you're calling me a goddamn bureaucrat, but once again, I will never, and I repeat, never be a goddamn bureaucrat in my goddamn life. So you sons of bitches can continue on with that crap. I ain't going to do it, all right? You people are pieces of trash if you're going to continue with this bureaucratic crap, all right? I hate bureaucrats. Do you understand that? I hate bureaucrats. I hate them. I hate them. And don't you ever forget it, boy. 541 Radio Graffiti. Hey, I'd like to give a shout-out to Xara Hawks for uh, tweeting me uh, Friday. Uh, Godzilla 3709 signing out. Hey, no problem. Uh, what's, what, what else we got going on over here? How about uh, 863 Radio Graffiti? It's a time of knowing what this world is about. Watching some good friends screaming, let me out. Let me out. Yeah, I'm telling you, old David Bowie, man. R.I.P. David Bowie, even though he was, uh, you know, bisexual fruit bowl. I also, I actually thought he was a decent musician, all right? I actually thought he was a decent musician. I actually liked that song. I'm a black star. I'm a black star. I'm not a wandering star. I'm a black star. I like that song. It's, it's not bad. As a matter of fact, the... The the video is just such esoteric, you know, really wicked, uh, you know, really wicked cinematography, really wicked. Uh, I, I don't want to get into it. Just just view it yourself, and I don't want to incept any idea of the video. It's actually a pretty good video. It's actually supposed to depict his death, supposedly. So, uh, yeah. Uh, 971, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, how's it going? How you doing? Hey, man, uh, I just wanted to know if you wanted to keep talking about, um, well, at first you were talking about uh, how, you know, people who watch anime, I want to have a more general discussion on that. Uh, basically, uh, You know what? I really don't. How about that? I don't want to have a discussion about it. All right? And I bet you're going to say, well, what if I go to work every day and come home and I like to do that? Well, then you're a sick pervert. All right? I'm serious. You're a sick-ass, twisted pervert. And once again, it just underscores how brainwashed you stupid, simple idiots are that you're willing to come out with so much energy and so much effort to defend your little sick, twisted, little uh, cartoon fetish as opposed to going out and preserving America and making America great again and making sure that our vote counts, for Christ's sake. All right, It just goes to show your fucking priorities. Excuse my goddamn French, all right? Uh, 920, Radio Graffiti. 
Geico presents sharing versus oversharing. Earlier this week, Claire Tippins shared a princess nickname generator, three pictures of her dog wearing a tutu, and two online quizzes, including what candy is your dream castle made of? Claire, your sharing has tipped the sugar scale and turned into oversharing. But have no fear, princess. Geico has something worth sharing with your internet kingdom, like how you can save hundreds on your car insurance just by visiting geico.com. No magic wand required. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Coach, can you hear me? What? Coach, can you hear me now? Yeah, you can't even fucking talk, you stupid idiot. Why don't you take the shit out of your mouth, all right, you moron? 949 Radio Graffiti. Oh, hey, Ghost. Uh, I just wanted to welcome you back to the airwaves. I missed you. I thought you were pretty cool. Well, well, I appreciate it, man. I really, I, you don't worry about it. I'll be here for a while. Once again, I may or may not be here tomorrow. I'm not really sure yet, folks, because, uh, I've got some business to take care of, for Christ's sake, and it means money. You know what I'm saying? So if I make it back here uh, in time, I'll do a show. If not, well, then I'm drinking on 6th Street, all right, F- folks? I'm serious, all right? That's all there is to it. So, uh, But I will be back Wednesday no matter what, all right? I might take the Taco Tuesday off and uh, do some drinking on 6th Street after I make some serious capital, all right? I've got to do a deal tomorrow. And uh, it, it means major money. So, I mean, uh, you know, money talks and uh, this crap is, you know, it, it could take a back seat. All right. But I ain't going nowhere, folks. I'm, I'm going to be here for a long time. And the reason is, is because Donald Trump, Donald Trump must be elected. All right. At all costs, he must be elected. We can't let these GOP jerk dicks sit here and try to rob us of our vote, try to implement Jim Crow. It's Donald Trump or nothing. And if Donald Trump is not the nominee, I refuse to vote, all right? I'm not voting for any of these scumbags, all right? They're all crooked criminals as far as I'm concerned, all right? I'm talking Ted Cruz, John Kasich, Hillary Rotten, Clinton. I'm not voting for any of them. Even if a freaking Joe Biden usurps the damn nomination of the DNC, I'm not voting for not one of them, all right? I'm abstaining my vote if Donald Trump is not the nominee, all right? Or if he doesn't run as a third party. And and if the Republicans want to play this game... I strongly advise him to go third party if that's the case. 502 Radio oh, Graffiti. Hey, Ghost on 6th Street. I heard they have a new shipment of Johnny Floater, Floodwater Label. Oh, yeah, yeah, real funny, asshole. All right. Hey, the floods out here in Texas is nothing to laugh about, asshole. All right. I mean, you know that we've had more uh, rain in Texas than in any other time in history. I mean, this this is serious business, man. I, I, I know that it's probably some harp crap in an attempt to try to suppress the uh, Texas independent spirit, but we, we're just brushing our shoulders off as it relates to these floods, baby, all right? All right, well, we, floods don't mean shit to us, all right? We, we just brush our shoulders off with that crap, all right? All right, us Texans, man, we're, we're, we're some badasses out here, all right? We got balls the size of grapefruits out here. We ain't afraid of nothing, boy. 260 Radio Graffiti. I know a winner when I see one. And Donald Trump is telling you right now, Glenn Shady is the winner. All right, shut up, all right? I mean, Jesus Christ, you think that was funny? It wasn't, moron. Uh, 609 Radio Graffiti. Projection we've been waiting for all night. That is from the state of Texas. Where Senator Ted Cruz, Texas. Uh, well, you can you, you can go ahead and put that, but uh, there is a bunch of discrepancies that have happened out here in Texas. Voter fraud, and it's because the Bush crime family has their tentacles out here. I mean, you know, Prescott Bush, which is Jeb Bush's Mexican son, is in some bureaucratic position out here. Of course, the Bushes live out here, and they're a bunch of carpetbaggers from Connecticut. I'm sick of carpetbaggers coming to Texas and trying to call themselves Texan, boy. All right? I mean, let me tell you something. My family's name is on the Alamo, boy. You understand that? I mean, my ancestry, and I'm not joking around, all right? My ancestry is on the Alamo, and it's not to mention we were at the Battle of Goliad, boy. Do you understand that? We were at the Battle of Goliad, boy. I'm a true Texan. I'm not like you sons of bitches that come over here on carpet bag and then claim to be Texas, all right? They claim to be a Texan. I'm a Texan, boy. 
I'm a Texan until the day I die. Screw these carpetbaggers, all right? Screw the Bush crime family from Connecticut trying to settle over here in Texas and calling themselves Texan, all right? I mean, screw Ted Cruz, that Canadian bacon piece of Cuban crap, coming over here trying to settle in Texas and claiming he's a Texan boy. These are carpetbaggers. They're carpetbaggers, and they, I don't want nothing to do with them anymore. I don't want nothing to do with them. I mean, these California, New York liberal carpetbaggers have come over here to Austin, Texas, and have ruined the whole goddamn city. I'm sick of them. I'm sick of these New York, California liberals that have ruined my city. They have ruined Austin, Texas. And this has turned into a liberal shithole. I mean, you heard somebody call in the other day. They want to put a tax on independent Lyft and Uber drivers. Can you believe this? Yeah, they want independent Lyft and Uber drivers to pay for a freaking city permit. And why? Because these liberals want to sit here and continue to fund themselves so they can bureaucratically extend their tentacles into our goddamn lives. And I'm sick of it. I'm utterly sick of it, for Christ's sake, man. Anyway, let's continue going, folks. All right, uh, 712 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Big Jack, where do you keep your cans? Uh, you, you know, that Big Jack stuff, it's, it's getting old, all right? It's stupid, it's ridiculous, it gets no lulls, all right? Bill, 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 Radio Graffiti. Long live the capitalist army and death the feminism, death the socialism, and death the totalitarianism. You see, I don't really appreciate that one bit. All right? I almost thought that was a decent, uh, you know, favorable little radio graffiti for yours truly. And, of course, they got to intermix me with some kind of Nazi garbage, which is, which is ridiculous. All right? I'm sick of you idiots calling me Ghostler. I'm sick of you idiots trying to compare me to some freaking Nazi, for Christ's sake. I mean, I'm a capitalist! And I deserve the respect accorded that title from each and every one of you little people. Do you understand that? Especially if you're not paying taxes, especially if you're not a worker, and especially if you're not a capitalist, boy. Jesus Christ. 907 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Vladimir Ghostland, did you get your wheelchair after you had your stroke? Well, first of all, I didn't have a stroke, and secondly, I don't have a wheelchair, all right, boy? I mean, I ain't going to have no stroke, all right, boy? Uh, I'm, I'm as strong as a goddamn freaking mule kick. You understand that? And let me tell you, your little fruity-ass voice came up to me in a damn bar room and said that. I would bitch slap you into the next life, boy. 631 Radio Graffiti. Yeah, this guy's fapping, for Christ's sake. 940 Radio Graffiti. Jake's E here. How about you take your wheelchair and we can go right off to my place and watch some anime and horse porn? Hey, uh, let me explain. Let me let me ask you something. Why does your voice sound like such a fruit? Huh? I mean, seriously, I'm asking you a serious question, 940. Why do you sound like you just popped out of the anal passage of Richard Simmons? Can you explain that to me? Well, I mean, you do it better, Gus. No, no, seriously. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm being very honest with you. I mean, <laughs> how, how old are you? How old are you? Oh, oh, why are you, oh, come on, oh, oh, give me a break, he hung up. That's what I thought, you little fruit bowl, huh? You can't, you can't face the truth, can't you, boy? <laughs> uh, you see, once these little fruit bowls are confronted by their little fruity-ass voices, for Christ's sake, all of a sudden they're like, oh, I got to hang on. That's what I thought, boy. That's what I thought. All right, give me a freaking break. <laughs> Did you see him? He didn't know what to say. He's like, oh, my God, he's making fun of my little fruit bowl voice. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's funny as hell, boy. That's funny as hell. That's right, man. Boy, I, if I were you, I would hang up too, boy. I don't blame you for being scared of me, boy. I don't blame you. Who else do we got? We got the Divine Clan, Radio Graffiti. Now, you're shoving the damn phone up your ass, for Christ's sake. Uh, well, oh, 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 look at who we have here. Kadu over here. Kadu Radio Graffiti. Yes, who's back? Back again. Ghostler back. 
something, you assholes! I hate Eminem, all right? Let me tell you something. I don't understand why real gangster rappers haven't taken a couple of pop shots at this asshole for making a complete mockery of Black Strife, all right? I'm serious, man. I mean, the BET Awards invites this asshole over after making a mockery of black people? Hey, idiots, you Eminem lovers, all right, especially you black folk that think Eminem has so much skill or whatever the case might be. Why don't you do a YouTube search about his song about black girls, huh? I'm, I'm not joking. I mean, take a look at what he has to say about your black women, huh? My brother's from another mother. I mean, seriously, listen to what this Eminem piece of garbage says about your black women. I mean, it's on YouTube. Look it up, for Christ's sake. Eminem black girl song. And then listen to it for a little bit, all right? I mean, it's racist! It's racist! How does this guy get a pass on racism, for Christ's sake? Answer me that, black people. How does Eminem get a pass on racism when he makes a goddamn song against black women? Huh? I mean, answer me that, black folk. It's like these idiots that are leading you black folks by the nose that are in blackface. I'm talking about Sean King, who's not even black, all right? I'm talking about Rachel Dozal, who's not even black. I mean, this kind of goes to show something, all right? I mean, this is a manifestation of something that, I mean, in my opinion, it seems to me that black folks don't have any real leaders. And the last leaders that you had, with all due respect, you killed them, all right? You killed them. I mean, look at Malcolm X. Who killed Malcolm X? Black folks, all right? So once again, it seems to me that... As anti-whitey as Black Lives Matter claims to be, you know what I'm saying? As anti-Caucasian as Black Lives Matter claims to be, it seems that they need a white leader to lead them around by the nose, man. Sean King, Rachel Dozal, Eminem, for Christ's sake. It's pathetic! So, Black Lives Matter, before you start mouthing off, Maybe you should start thinking about those things, huh? Maybe you should start thinking about, well, man, if I hate Whitey, baby, if I hate Whitey, why is Whitey leading our asses all over the motherfucking place, baby? If I hate Whitey, baby, why in the hell is Whitey over here in blackface trying to talk garbage, baby, leading me around by the nose, baby? I mean, don't these motherfuckers understand my kids, baby? I got to do this for my kids, baby. I'm serious. I mean, you black folks, you need to start recognizing that you're being led around by white people in blackface. And the sooner you people understand that, the better off you'll be, all right? And let me tell you, Eminem, I've never seen him. I've been wanting to see him walking around Austin, Texas, for Christ's sake. And I'm serious as a heart attack about this. If I see this son of a bitch and he's in a bar or something, I'm going to go right at this son of a bitch. I'm going to break his nose, man. I'm going to break his jaw, all right? And I could care less if I go to jail for it, for Christ's sake. Are you kidding me? I mean, as soon as I break and shatter Eminem's jaw I, and I go to jail, for Christ's sake, every black and Mexican that's in the jail are going to hoist me on their shoulder like a goddamn sultan, you know, for putting this idiot in this goddamn place. I guarantee it, boy. I guarantee it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not joking, man. These black people, they'll put me on their shoulder when I'm in jail like I'm some kind of a fucking sultan, man. Anyway, I'm serious. If I see Eminem, I'm whooping your ass, all right? Somebody tell Eminem that, too, all right? You tell him that Ghost, if he sees him, he's whooping his ass, all right? Now, I don't care the consequence, either. I'm whooping his ass. Anyway, 248 Radio Graffiti. Ghost, comrade, I'm worried the U.S. is stealing me and Nikolai's business with ISIS. We were the first one and, to... And that's, a, that's a horrible... First of all, you need to grow uh, a pair so that you can have some bass in your voice. And secondly, that's one of the most horrible Russian accents I've ever heard in my life. All right? I mean, I could have farted a better Russian accent, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. 516 Radio Graffiti. What, are you going to say something? Or are you just going to sit there and play with the goddamn Peter Papa? What? 
Jesus Christ. I mean, how old are you, 10, for Christ's sake? You're not even old enough to be listening to this broadcast. How about Crasher 925, Radio Graffiti? Yeah, we got another Helen Keller deaf mute, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ, 661, Radio Goddamn Graffiti. Hey, can you do a Hadouken and put me back on hold, please? Can I do a Hayuken? Hayuken! That's what I do to these stupid, dumb, totalitarian... Hayuken! Tiger! Tiger! Tiger uppercut! That was a badass game back in the 90s. I'm serious, man. I mean, I used to go out with my son to these freaking, uh, these arcades. When there used to be arcades and there wasn't any sexual connotation to them, to go out there and play that, Street Fighter Two, for Christ's sake, uh, uh, Soul Edge, remember that? Oh, man, I used to love those fighting games, man. Anyway, uh, and, and look, I'm not a gamer, all right? I don't like video games as it relates, but I like the, the arcade games, for Christ's sake, man. They're, they're not bad. It's something nostalgic about it. I like it. 410, Radio Graffiti. It would be legal in Texas to shoot trains. I'm so late. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God damn it, you sons of bitches. I've told you for about freaking almost eight years to stop talking about my granny, all right? Don't talk about my granny. My granny was a pious woman, all right? I mean, I never heard this woman curse in her life. So stop talking about my granny. 530 Radio Graffiti. I am a racist against 11. All hail Britannia. Well, you know, unfortunately, no one's hailing Britannia. You've got Obama bitch slapping Britannia, and it sucks, all right? I do not condone what Obama did to Britannia. I mean, it is jeopardizing our friendship, and I think that this guy's a piece of trash for doing that, threatening Britannia in trade, threatening economic terrorism if they vote for the Brexit. I hope that this inspires the Europeans to vote for the Brexit. All right? I'm serious. All right? Screw Obama. 204 Radio Graffiti. Hey, you fucker. What did anime ever do to you? You fuck. Fuck off. Oh, oh. Look at him. Oh, you see, you see all that energy and effort and anger as it relates to his cartoon fetish? Where's that same effort, energy, and anger as it relates to the vote being ripped off from this stupid son of a bitch, huh? Uh, where's the effort, energy, and anger as it relates to the totalitarian, the totalitarianism, excuse me, that's being incrementally brought on on this idiot's life? The lack of economic opportunity and all this other crap, you see? That's because he's got some stupid mother, some single dish rag whore mother probably taking care of this piece of trash. Anyway, I'm done with radio graffiti. Let's talk a little bit about some serious subject matters here. Uh, Asho, what's going on, man? What did you want to talk about during the show? Hey, what's up, Ghost? Hey, sorry I couldn't. I, um, I was AFK the other time that you called on me on Friday, I think it was. Right? What's that? What's that, man? I didn't hear you. Go ahead. Sorry. Um... I was uh, AFK that one time I called on uh, on Friday. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, go ahead, man. Uh, well, what do you want to talk about, man? Did you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, have you ever approached a Donald Trump supporter supporter in real life? Have you ever approached – I mean, no, 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 not a Donald Trump supporter. The people that hate Donald Trump, have you ever approached one of these? I approach him every day, man. I'm in Austin, Texas, man. It, it, not too many people like uh, Donald Trump out here, and they're completely irrational. And when you ask them what is it that you don't like about Donald Trump, they say the same talking points that uh, these leftist liberal media are trying to shove down our holes, that he's racist, that you know he hates gays, and all these red herrings that this man never said. And then when you tell them that, uh, well, you know, Louis Farrakhan actually, uh, you know, supports Trump uh, as it relates to banning Muslims for a temporary uh, amount of time to vet these people, and and he agrees with Donald Trump. I mean, we got uh, uh, lots of people that are of the persuasion that uh, 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 of minority groups, uh, even homosexuals, that are supporting this man. So. When you put those that substance on the debating table as it relates to these people, they don't know what to say. They just spit on you, you know. They try to they try to get violent. Although they don't get violent with me, man. I'm serious. I, I 
I, it, it's nothing for me to whoop a man's ass, and moreover, or, or a woman's ass. I mean, I'm not joking. I mean, they want equal rights. They want to spit on me. A woman wants to lay their hands on me. I will be more than happy to get my Ike Turner pimp hand strong on these sluts if they lay a hand on me, if they want equality. But, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, I've seen it. Uh, you know, they like to get violent. They like to agitate. They like to, you know, do these sorts of things. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Do you have any personal experience with these losers? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I've already told you about the, the immigrant heaven in California, but it's funny because the conversation goes a little bit like this. Every time it goes, oh, I hate Donald Trump. Fuck this guy, all right? And then you ask him, okay, so who are you supporting? Oh, I'm not voting. Well, if you're not voting, at least, hate, you know, vote against the guy you hate so much. Have you noticed? Yeah, of course. That most- oh, no, absolutely right. And, you know, that's why Bernie Sanders came out this weekend and suggested that the reason that he's not getting the votes that he supposedly is, deserves or that, that supposedly views the polls or the, the, the same resonance of the polls is because his voters are poor, which is the most condescending, white, privileged uh, statement I think that anybody could ever give. Yeah, yeah, that's what I. Mean, I, that's I mean, do, do you I, agree uh, with that? Do, do you agree that that uh, this idiot Bernie prostate infected Sanders calling his voters too poor to vote is really condescending, man? There's, like you said, there is no excuse to not vote. We have libraries, we have public ballots. There's no excuse to not vote, to be honest. And yeah, that's 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 my opinion on this issue. To be honest. Hey, Asho, I really appreciate it, man. Do you want anything? You want to plug anything? You got like some website, or you got something you want to plug? Um, I'll I'll give my Twitter name right now. I also will have one question for you. I've never asked you this. I, but what do you? What is your stance on narcos? On narco trafficking? All right. Uh, go ahead and give your Twitter out, and I'll go ahead and uh, let you know. Okay, my Twitter is for everyone who wants wants to follow me. I follow back. Whatever, I don't care. It's A A A. So four A's, four S's, and five H's. All right. All right, Asho. I really appreciate it, man. And uh, I'll go ahead and leave you on the line. Narco trafficking. Um, unfortunately, it is a byproduct of the war on drugs. And I have always alluded to this. And as a matter of fact, I'm currently writing an ebook on trying to help people capitalize. I, I mean, I'm serious about this. All right, I'm sketching it out right now. I don't know when it's going to come out, but it's going to teach everybody who wants to capitalize to capitalize. Now, uh, I don't agree with narco trafficking. I think that uh, it does, uh, you know, induce crime and criminal activity, uh, especially drug lords who want to protect their turf. There's a lot of violence related to it, uh, not to mention the drug addicts that get uh, – that get hooked on these drugs. They partake in crime by stealing and burglaries to try to get more money to get a fix for their habit and so on and so forth. Uh, But unfortunately, uh, there are situations, especially when you're born into uh, the ghetto, you're born into the barrio, or you're born into some white trailer park, where the only option to get some capital to be able to get yourself out of the ghetto is partaking in this or dabbling in this. And when I say dabbling, I'm not condoning it, okay, because it's illegal, all right? But how else are you going to get capital to become a capitalist if you are in the utter gutter, all right? How else are you going to generate capital if you don't have a family that's going to leave you anything to help you, uh, you know, create a business, So in my personal perspective, I don't blame people who are put in precarious situations that are truly impoverished, you know, that that are that have brothers and sisters that are 12 living in one freaking bedroom apartments. All right. That that literally have no chance in hell getting out of. I'm talking about individuals that are out here that are truly impoverished, that their parents or parent is sending them out in the street to beg for money. I've seen this out here in Texas, folks, believe it or not. You go south of Austin, you will see uh, this type of activity of young kids going up to you, begging for money because their parents put them out there to do so. Okay? I don't blame these people for partaking in this. Now, why is it so lucrative? Because of the war on drugs. Once again, folks, you make anything illegal. 
And once the government makes anything illegal, all of a sudden, whatever is illegal, the price goes up. All right? I mean, why do you think the price of guns have gone up the ass? Because these damn liberals have been threatening that they're going to make laws. They're going to ban certain guns. They're banning ammunitions. They're banning all kinds of crap, folks. And it's because, to be completely honest with you, they want to take away our guns so that these totalitarians in the United States government could do the same thing that the totalitarian leftists have done to, the, to Europe, to the countries in Europe. And that's an absolute fact. So once again, folks, if you are in utter squalor, I'm talking true poverty. I'm not talking about, you know, somebody who's middle class, whose parents are actually working, you know what I'm saying, who's just collecting a government entitlement and just getting fat in the ass. I'm talking about people that are truly, 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 truly impoverished. I strongly advise you folks that you do whatever it takes to get your capital, and once you get your capital, turn legitimate. All right, do not... Uh, I mean, have you ever seen an old drug dealer? All right, it doesn't exist because they either die, they go to jail, all right, or they turn state's evidence. All right, I mean, it's just it's all there is to it. They don't, they you know, they don't see it. You don't see it. But I don't blame individuals that are in just utter squalor situations trying to get capital so that they can get themselves out of the ghetto. I really don't blame them, folks. Anyway, uh, that's about it, folks. Uh, I'm only going to do about 30 minutes here. I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. I've got a big deal to sign tomorrow, folks. I mean, it means big money. Uh, I'm going to see if I can try to get back before uh, the time. If I can't, please understand that I may take the Taco Tuesday off tomorrow because I'm, I've, I've made some capital, man. I'm going to be kicking back. I'm going to be chilling, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I want to bask in my success. That's, I mean, that's what everybody should do. When you make large sums of money, you should take some time to bask in your success. All right? I mean, because why or else? Why are you doing what you're doing? I mean, why are you working hard? Why are you busting your ass? Why are you making capital to bask in your success? You know what I'm saying? To live lavish. That's why I always say living lavish is a necessity if you're working your ass off. All right, and once again, I always suggest this to everybody. Do not, and I repeat, do not overextend your lifestyle. All right, don't put yourself in a lifestyle you can't sustain for the long term, because I'm telling you this, when you can no longer sustain that lifestyle, everybody that you thought was your friends are going to be the first ones pointing their finger and laughing at your ass when you no longer have the capital that you flossed you know what I mean, that you threw around. You know what I'm saying? I'm not joking, man. They'll be the first ones laughing at you. They'll be the first ones being like, eh, hey, you see, he couldn't do it. He didn't make it. Eh, hey. I'm not joking. Don't overextend your lifestyle unless you can afford for the long term. And when I mean the long term, that means until you're dead, all right? If you can sustain a certain lifestyle until you're dead, well, then live it up, baby. All right? Live it up. Live it up. That's why you're working. That's why you're capitalizing. All right? That's why you're better than those that are collecting entitlements. Because you're taking the initiative. You're carving out your own destiny, for Christ's sake. You're not letting some bureaucrat dictate to you what your life is. You're not letting some bureaucrat dictate to you how much food you can have, what kind of food you can have, what kind of house you can have. You're doing it. It's up to you. That's what the beautiful part about capitalism is. The beautiful part about capitalism is that you take your skills, your creativity, your ability, and you utilize that to carve out whatever life you want, whatever life you want, all right? Not some bureaucrat, not your mammy, not your daddy, not anybody, what you want, folks. And the beautiful part about capitalism is that even though you're pursuing your self-interest, even though you're selfish, even though you're going out there, you're busting your ass, you're collecting capital, you're making money for yourself, all right? You know as well as I, by default, you're helping the collective. By making money, by making capital, you are helping the collective. By default, whether you want to or not, for Christ's sake, and that's the beautiful part about capitalism. Anyway, folks, I am out of here. I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Please follow me on Twitter at PoliticsGhost, all one word, no underscores. 
Politics Ghost. And if you haven't already done so, please bookmark the website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, Blog Talk Radio. Dot com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. I have every single broadcast there ready to download absolutely free. So go ahead, by all means, whenever you don't have any anything to do, go listen to a few broadcasts out there. I encourage you to do so, all right? Anyway, folks, I want to thank you for tuning in with me. I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. I got a big deal, lots of money tomorrow. So if I am not here, I'll be sure to tweet at you. So please follow me on Twitter, Politics Ghost, all one word, no underscores. Anyway, folks, thank you for tuning in with me. Long live the capitalist army and death to feminism, death to socialism, and death, death, death to totalitarianism. I'm out of here. Getting lost in the music is great, except if you're driving. Nissan's available Intelligent Safety Shield technologies could help you avoid bad drivers. Hurry into your local Nissan store and get great offers during the Safety Today event. Or shop ChooseNissan.com today. Now, back to the music.